What up, everybody? Welcome to the Tuesday Show. Oh, yeah. Forgot about these. What up, everybody? <laughs> What's to wrong the with having show. Sh- This is the wrong with having shades on your head. Okay. You can do that if you want. You Avi- got it. Aviator David. There we go. Welcome to the Tuesday Show. My name is Ultra David. What was that? I was just trying to be like a Homer Simpson. Right <laughs> <laughs> when all the explosions are happening downstairs. <laughs> Boom. Boom. How? Welcome to the Tuesday show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, as you can tell, I was uh, just got in here. Traffic was a little, a little big. But you today. flew in, right? I mean, look at you. You got the woo. woo! That's, the That's right. I flew in. I have two pairs of sunglasses, and they both look exactly like this. <laughs> There you go. Anyway, you're James. Uh, let's talk How's about... How's everybody going? Final round 2019. We're going to talk about the Mortal Kombat 11 stress test. Oh, okay. We'll talk about the Street Fighter V League. We got some topics to discuss on the 5-5 matchup, including, I guess, coaching. Google's stadium, Stadia, and um, also coaching. Crowd coaching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And various and sundry other stuff. But, yeah, let's start with final round. It was this past weekend. Are you laughing at my sunglasses you still? You just look so like... You, you look like someone from Top Gun. <laughs> well. Do you have your MK11 beta shirt? Oh, dude, look at you. God. All right. Fancy times with Enough your this. MK11 betas. Okay. Final round 2019. We were there, both of us, yes. over the weekend. They played a lot of video games there. Obviously, uh, so just to talk about final round in general, obviously there have been issues with the tournament the past few years, you know, running late, et cetera, et cetera. I felt like it ran very well this Dude. last weekend. It seemed like most things ran on time. didn't seem like we were having any pools finishing at 3 a.m. like it was in the past. There were definitely some issues with consoles here and there. I heard some people had, like, some overheating on some consoles, but that's not their fault necessarily, right? Because it's just the PlayStation 4 has that yeah. problem. And um, I, don't, I was just, like, really happy to see it back in the hotel venue, back to what final round was. I mean, the shame of it, obviously, is that there's two st- two rooms. I didn't see it. Like, I wanted to meet Party Wolf. I didn't get a chance to say hi to him or anything like that. I didn't meet a bunch of the guys that were always just in the Tekken slash, you know, other non-Street yeah. Fighter hall for the longest of time. But, you know, at the same time, I was just really happy to see Final Round kind of back to, you know, how it started. Kind so, of like you said, it's in the hotel that it was in for many, many years before it went to the convention center in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you. It was happy to be, I, I was happy to be back at that hotel. I mean, we were staying at the Econo Lodge down the street because we didn't know we were going <laughs> there until, like, pretty late. So, the, the rooms were already sold out. And it was not just Econo Lodge, but like a particularly run-down Econo Lodge, to be honest. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. The best thing about the Econo Lodge was that it was across the street from Louisiana Bistro. Yeah. But outside right. of that, um, yeah. boy. But yeah, uh, as far as the... Yeah, it definitely sucks. As far as the hotel goes, the hotel venue, I should say... I was really happy to be back there. It felt like homey in a way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and I thought mm-hmm. that was really cool. It was obviously well attended considering that size. Mm-hmm, I thought that mm-hmm. was really cool. And yeah, I mean, we finished earlier than expected on some things. Like, for example, Tekken finished at like 6.20 or something. And Street Fighter mm-hmm. wasn't starting until 7. You know, yeah, like there was, yeah, it, yeah, was it was like, like time. more than yeah, on time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I thought, I thought from that angle, it was it was seemed good. I mean, I'm, I wasn't playing in it, and I haven't talked with that many players about it, but the ones who I did talk with said that they had a good time. Right. So, you know, I mean, seems, I, seemed cool. I would see, say that currently the biggest complaint that I've seen was uh, no medals for all of top eight. Uh, and then Brian F. was saying that he got fifth place, so he didn't get any payout from the tournament right. at all. He's going to get CPT money, right. but, you know, there was about 300 and some entrants, $10 each for each game, so that's $3,000, yeah. basically, $3,200, but it's only going to the top four. Yeah. And, you know, that's definitely a concern, but, you know, again, different tournaments are going to run with different uh, rule sets, prize give-outs. Yeah. I think at least... Top eight should get like at least their venue fee back, you know. I'm definitely kind of with you on that one. Uh, I do wish that there had been bigger payouts. That's true. I did hear about so that the audio issues aren't uh, like there was no sound at a lot of the stations and stuff like oh. that. So, yeah. bummer. 
Okay. Well, those seem, they, those are good like points. Like no to bring headphones up. and stuff like that. Okay. So. Those are definitely good points to bring up. Um, it ran on time. That was good. Mm -hmm. But I mean, considering how the the tournament, the, the reputation it had, especially the year that it had the thousand Street Fighter entrance, and it just kind of snowballed a lot of the problems with final round and then Larry tried to fix it with the two venue yeah. with the, with the venue change and then that didn't really work out for him etc cetera, etc cetera. considering all of that stuff I really felt like this final round was very successful I, I enjoyed it I thought I, I had a great time there didn't seem like there was a lot of the same kind of problems as the past I think that's definitely true mm -hmm. and I had a good talk with um, one of the guys who helps run final round there mm -hmm. who um, you know, I wasn't stoked that we always bring up the fact that they didn't have the best year in 2016. Um, and I just basically told him I feel like it'd be fraudulent if we didn't talk about it. But <laughs> at the same time, after a year like this, I think I'm ready to move on and not bring that up yeah, every time yeah. we talk about Final mm -hmm, Round. Mm -hmm. I, think that's, I think that's fair enough at this point. That was three years ago. Um, and uh, like I said, it seemed to run well this year. Yeah, but you know, again, it's also part of the story, right? Because I mean, that happened. They went to the new venue, yeah, and now well, they're back. That's what we've been talking about, of course. Right, and they're back to the venue, the old venue, and it ran well. And yeah. you know, com that's part of the story, talking about the improvements from 2016 Absolutely. to now. So, I'm just saying, like you know. at now, like in for 2020. I don't feel like I need to bring <laughs> it up anymore. But you know, right. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, fair enough. That was a good talk. Um, like I said, oh, okay. it seemed, seemed cool. I see. So a lot of the stations just didn't have the setups for the splitters, the audio splitters, so you couldn't plug in your own headphones, et cetera, et cetera, you know, gotcha. which a lot of players like to do these days. That has become a standard at a lot of tournaments now where you have to have the setup with the audio there available for people to plug in headphones. A lot of players do need to use that audio cue to, to help them play games. I mean, it was important in games like Marvel, right, where Doom I mean, would yeah. scre scroll off the screen and, screen and you would hear hidden missiles sure. and you knew that it's it important in many games, and yeah. even in games that don't specifically have it, need it like that, people like it. So, okay, you could have plugged in your own headphones, but you just mm -hmm. had to bring your own gear. I yeah. see. Well, uh, to be fair, OG Geek, he's, OG Geek saying that watching the stream final round doesn't seem like a premiere atmosphere. I don't really know if I agree with that necessarily because honestly, if you're talking about like premiere atmosphere, that's what Evo CEO and Combo Breaker. That's the end. <laughs> That's, like, that's it, right? I don't feel like any other events have quite gotten to that atmosphere, you know, to that level. So, and and another thing too is that I really do like the grassroots feel of final round. That's one of my favorite things, you know, to have everybody singing No Round Brown songs for Poke Chop, you know, playing, you know, that to me is Super what cool. I expect out of final round. And then let me tell you something. Obviously we weren't on commentary, so we didn't have headsets on or anything like that. But that Tekken top eight was roaring. Like that the crowd, kind of, yes. Dude, that environment is like, it, I'm so jealous every time we have like a West Coast tournament and everyone's like, where something happened. It wasn't always like that. All right, the East Coast was always louder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh -huh. we weren't always a morgue out here in California. <laughs> and now we are. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Um, it was a lot of fun, I felt. And in this, in the, on the CPT stream, on the Street Fighter Five stream, we were right in front of the like crowd. It was like right behind mm -hmm, us, and mm -hmm. I thought that was a cool view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm, like as mm -hmm. the commentator, I like having people like right here. Like yeah, they can yeah, hear yeah. me, and I can hear what they're chatting about, and and I think that that's really cool for me personally. I, mm -hmm, I enjoy mm -hmm. that. Uh, I hope that that came across. Um, the atmosphere is like nowhere else, truly. I mean, the there were a couple, a few dudes from England who came out to help oh, work yeah, on, yeah, the, yeah, on the stream right. on the Street Fighter uh -huh, Five uh -huh. stream, and. They couldn't shut up about how loud the community was here. And for them, right, like, they're, they come to me, they're like, wow, American players are so loud. Everybody in the U.S. is super loud. And, and you're I was like, like, yep, that's right. That's right. We're all like that. Yeah, <laughs> Even no, in the West Coast. Yeah. No, yep. uh, it's, that's definitely uh, the East Coast and yeah. uh, Atlanta thing. But, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. Anyway, um, I, I, I enjoyed the atmosphere. I thought it was cool. I never had time. Inaccurate. I was playing Mortal Kombat instead. I could have gone into the arcade room, but didn't. Did you? I went one time because I was just walking around, and Larry, Shim Blanca himself, ran into me and was like, 
let's play some Super Turbo. Damn. And I was like, okay. okay. And so like he dragged me into the arcade room, and then there was the Super Turbo. Well, there was it was a Hyper Street Fighter Two machine. Okay. Okay. So he gets there. Everybody on there is just playing Super Turbo. He gets on there and plays Champion Edition Guile. Okay. What a butthole. And then he blows up whoever he is on stream. And I'm like, okay, you pick Champion Edition Guile. That means there's only one character I can pick. Hyper I Fighting Zangief. Dang. Hyper Fighting Zangief because fighting... Pick Lariat. Champion Edition slash Hyper Fighting Guile with Zangief is my specialty. Okay. Done. Okay, you blew him up. Oh. Free. Free. No, I'm just kidding. No, it was... It, it, I, I won. I won. Okay. But then I went on a streak with him... And then someone eventually beat my Zangief with a Sagat. Oh, what about With a Champion Edition Sagat. So I was like, all right. So I switched to Hyper Fighting Ken. Mm. Blew him, blew up everybody for a while. Eventually lost to a DJ. Switched to Super Turbo Cami. Okay. Blew up a bunch of people. Until one okay. of those UK guys came in with Ryu and beat my Cami. Okay. Then I came back with Super Turbo Zangief, and then I blew him up. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> four win streaks with four different characters. Okay. Nicely done, my man. Even getting Zangi super on people like a troll, Ding. you know. All right, that's the hard tick. <sighs> that's right. Nice work out there. It was cool. I had a good time, and I thought that all of the tournaments, all the matches that I watched were really good. Uh, I watched the Tekken stuff. I watched the Soul Calibur stuff. Those were super cool. Dude, the Soul Calibur top cool. eight was so good, and then the Tekken top eight yes. was ridiculous. Excellent. Excellent. So good, and then. Street Fighter. It was great. Like, a lot of people have been saying, like, oh, you know, I really enjoyed your commentary this weekend and everything like that. But again, it's just one of those situations where when the matches are so good and the storylines write themselves, it's like it's hard to, to not have amazing commentary at that point in time. It definitely, it's like it, the game the, is, like, doing it for us. Sure. Yeah, know? we only we only have to add a little bit at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was great. Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Want to, um, anything else to say about the tournament overall? Uh, again, just really happy. I hope Larry keeps it up. I hope he keeps going with it and, you know, tries to keep it into that venue and everything. It did seem like they did a couple things, like they, you know, the, obviously the registration was a little higher and everything like that. Yeah, Maybe try I to think that was intentional. keep it a smaller size. And I, and and they also, you know, made sure to not accept registrations on the site, which they have done in the past. And so also good. A lot of things were fixed that way. And as long as you can keep that up, I think Final Round can kind of return to its, you know, status as one of the events to attend. By the um, way, shout outs to the Brawlhalla scene. I've never <laughs> I've never yeah. met anybody who plays Brawlhalla. Tubaware did for like a while and then that's the literally the only person I ever met. But I know that there's an incredible number of people out there who play and I know that there's like a huge amount of esports dollars in that thing. And I'm always skeptical like is this a money laundering scheme? Who's actually playing this game and actually going to tournaments? And then sure enough, there was a good crowd there for Brawlhalla. There was like a legit crowd out in the front, in the middle of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dude, one of the Brawlhalla they devs. Exist, it turns out. So one of the Brawlhalla cool. devs that even came up to me and introduced himself to me and everything like that. Wow. I was like, oh, cool. Okay. Check that out. Very so, cool. Yeah. So that game definitely has a pretty big scene out there. So, um, and we've mentioned some of the tournaments before with like really good prize money out there. They definitely have a lot of prize money. Wow, the cats are going wild over there, huh? What are you doing? Just being cats. Yep. So yeah, let's talk about the tournament results. Yep. Street Fighter Five was won by Punk with Karen, and almost immediately, people were like, "Is Karen the best in the game? Do you think she's better than Akuma?" She's top five, right? Do you think that she beats all these other top two characters? Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you think that she's too good? Do you think her crouching medium kick, the cancel window, needs she to be nerfed? Saw, yeah. <laughs> all the stuff coming back. It's, it was crazy. Well, was I mean, so we had two soon. of them. We had two of them in top three, right? And, so, and by know. the way, like, yes, she's good. Yeah. And we have all uh -huh, talked uh -huh. about it beforehand. But it was just like immediately after that, <laughs> you know. It's like, like Capcom uh, Cup. Oh, birdie, clear the whole time right. was like top right. three, right? right? Everybody was Everybody talking about it. how good Birdie was the entire season. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah, for sure. Clearly. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, man, did you see that little highlight clip that High Fight put together? Of every hit confirmed that, like, Punk had? It was like, strong pow! Low four pow! It was just like... It's wild. It's so... It's silly. I mean, it's some like of them... Some of them were, like with punishes, some of them were yeah. reacting to them hitting a button, oh, yeah. but there were clearly many of them 
that were just, oh, thank you, uh, Wheat Lad for the sub. There were so many instances where it was just raw, clean hit, mm -hmm. and it was just a confirm. It's, it's nuts. And, and what I thought was good, too, is he put in a couple where they're blocked instead, and there's no cancel. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, I'm, almost, mm -hmm. I'm almost more impressed that that almost never happened. Yep. That I don't know if I can recall him ever in the whole top eight doing, like, crash and medium kick on block and then canceling it a full yeah, tenko. Yeah, uh, Maybe he did, like, the command dash once, but never the full, like, the full-on yeah. follow-up. Mm -hmm. uh, dang. You know, that's... It's it's remarkable, honestly. And he he played against Momochi in the Grand Finals, who was another one of the all-time best with Punishers and Footsie players. Mm -hmm. And he looked pedestrian by comparison. Yeah. And Punk just looked out of this world in that top eight. It's That's crazy, dude. You know, we've seen him play well before. Maybe I'm so impressed because it's been a little while since I've seen that level of play mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. But, it feels like Punk you know. is back to what we remembered from that yeah. run where we were confident he was going to win EVO. Yeah. Right? And a lot of people this year, all of a sudden, after he won that, I, like, I saw him tweet, like, hey, I won. And yeah. I just saw all these people, like, now it's time to take Evo. Yeah. Like, that kind of feeling. That's If he plays like that. Right, exactly. That level of play you know? was enough to make everybody a believer again, you know, at For that sure. point. So. So that was cool. It was very cool to see Momochi up there again. He just won Evo Japan. He got to Grand Finals again. And Johnny, his student, Fudo Johnny, uh, taught by Momochi uh, for the past, I think, three years. They've been working together, and you could really see the payoff. I mean, mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. he has such a Momochi kind of style of the whiff punishing footsies game. It's like right. clearly closely inspired by his mentor. Yeah, yeah. he does it great. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> It would be nice to have a teacher like Momochi. <laughs> I imagine it would be. <laughs> you know, but he, I mean. He didn't take schlubs in, keep in mind. Like, he specifically yeah, chose yeah, yeah, yeah. players who he thought were going to be good. Had the potential. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was right. Yeah. He was definitely right. I just want I just want to talk to Momochi and be like, you know, teach me how to do the, like, hit confirms and whiff punishes. Because, man, like, that's that's the, the, the single hit confirm. Whiff punishing is easily the the... the one that God, those like when you see people that good at whiff punishing, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like even as a viewer, I'm like, the other guy can't do anything. <laughs> you can't. You can't do anything about that. Like I don't yeah. even know what to do. As a viewer. Did you see his tweet? Did you see Johnny's tweet too? Yeah, he was I like, did, yeah. I'm disappointed in my yeah, performance. He wasn't satisfied. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But you know, good, good on him though. Good on he'll, him. He'll that's 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 how you win. That's how you win is when you're not never satisfied. So Also great to see CJ Truth up there. He's mm -hmm. been on the come up for the last half year and continues to do so. This is a big one for Brian F. Gets top eight. Um, I think I said incorrectly on the stream that he had not made top eight at a major of this size before. But actually he got in top eight at Combo Breaker two years ago. Oh, um, okay, okay. And I had that in my notes. And I think still said the wrong thing because somebody okay. sent me a tweet that was like Brian did make top eight. And in my head, I was like, Yeah, see, that's I was I, like, I, I thought I did say that. I kind of well because when you said that, and in my mind, I was like, I thought he was top eight at a combo okay. breaker once, okay. but I didn't say it because you had the notes. I okay, so, yeah, yeah, so I just anyway, I just got it wrong, but okay, um, okay. my bad. Anyway, good job to him, and then Cien and Tampa Bison. I mean, honestly, Brian Hef, I felt like he had kind of like the tournament of his, uh, like one, like almost the tournament of his life. Because he was playing so well up to that point, bummer, you know, for him and and for uh, Oil King to go zero and two in top eight. But you made it to top eight, and that's that really suck. impressive. So, anyways, yeah. and then Cien got seventh place. He continues to look good. And Tampa Bison, who told me right before the tournament started, I leaned back to him. I was like, "Hey, man, you playing this game much these days?" And he was like, "You know how I prepared for this event by playing Apex Legends." <laughs> Well, you know what? Then you know who else I talked to was CJ Truth, who also lives in Florida. And I was like, hey, CJ, is Tampa Bison actually not playing this game? What's going on there? And uh -huh. he was like, that dude grinds every day. <laughs> every day was his claim. I mean, and to be fair, I don't know. if he's grinding the t for practice for the tournament by playing Apex Legends, he's only doing the same thing that the person who won first place does. Fair enough. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. No, FGC Jesus was definitely uh, um, like the, 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 the rising star 2013 <laughs> for that tournament for sure. So he did, he did do really well. It was a super hard set of pools. Dude. We were talking about it all day on the stream, but man, the pools were crazy. Each pool had, I felt, three to four people who could credibly make top eight. 
Right. And that pool, F2, the crazy one, the one with the ridiculous one, that's the one that FTC Jesus was one out for making it to top. He put Mago in the loser's Indeed. bracket, right? So, and then he just took out a bunch of people. I'm telling, I don't know. I think Fong is super good. In fact, Mono even like. Super good. He messaged me afterwards. He's like, man, like he was like talking to me like FGC was Jesus was good, but like he was like, yeah, you know, I want to, I want to show people, and I was I, like, I think Fong is good, and you know Mono, he's kind of high on Fong as well, right? I mean, so. I think Fang is all right. I think he's a mid-ish character. High mid. Super. I don't know if I'd high, high mid, mid, my man. High <laughs> well, mid, I'd love like to be wrong. About higher that. side of yeah. mid. I just think that once people perfect the the sil- I mean, did you see the tweets from Wolfgang? Because, you know, the Blanca player, right? Someone told him that he should play Fang. And all of a sudden, he just, like, put out all these posts of just these dirty left-right mix-ups with that character. And so, you got to get the hit first. Okay. Well, so, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I guess we'll see. I don't think he's a bad character for sure, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, ninth were, like, MOV, JB, Gamer B, and Shine. Good to see Gamer B oh, up that there was cool. again. So. But, you know, the U.S. did better in this event than I think I would have expected. In well, general, I mean, not just the guy who won it, who was American, but also uh, top four, 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 yeah, fourth, fifth, seventh, two of two and ninth, uh, two of the thirteenth, etc. I mean, there's just a lot of Americans who did. There did were well. a lot of key matchups that were streamed that had the Americans taken out the Japanese. Yeah. Uh, cool kid beat Tokido, for yeah. example. Uh, I believe it was Smug who beat. Um, God, who Strider beat Itazan. Yeah, he beat Itazan. Smug then beat Fujimura, Fujimura, maybe? Fujimura, that's what it was. It was Fujimura. It was a lot of that stuff happening there. And, you know, very interesting stat. Uh, so uh, one of the UK, one of the European players joked like, oh, four Americans in top eight, is that the most that there's ever been in a premiere? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, uh, Glenn, the game 2K on, on uh, Twitter, said there have been nine tournaments with four or more American players Ooh. in the top eight. And of those nine, whenever that's happened, seven of them were won by American players. And I was actually impressed by that stat. And I looked at the brackets and I was like, that's going to be hard because all the Americans are eliminating each other here. Make it eight out of ten now. Wow, that's crazy. Make it eight out of ten. So if we can get half of the players, we just need that 50% yeah, shot. Yeah, right, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> Not a great percentage there yeah, but okay exactly anything else to say about sf5 i thought it went really well um no not that i can think of just a lot of great players really awesome to see the start of the season and finally you know moving past a lot of the theory fighting that way <laughs> yeah that's true uh tampa bison beat dogura on stream also yeah it is it is interesting that there are two Col- uh, two Karens in top three, but then after that, the character variety was really good, like going down to the t- even the top sixteen. So you know, I was happy about it. Yeah, we'll talk about the announcement. Well, maybe we're, maybe now's the best time. Okay. So um, I was planning to do that after we we'll go through all the results, but that's cool. That's, so that's, so there were no announcements. No, I, that's a lie. We saw the new stage, the ah. grass stage. I'm really kind of glad I decided not to troll the stream. If you guys actually watched the top eight, I had the shirt and it was buttoned up. It was. There was a reason why it was buttoned up. Yeah. It's because I was wearing a Honda shirt <laughs> underneath it. Yeah. Just to troll people, but yeah. I was like, uh, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and that's probably, I'm glad that you didn't. Yeah, I mean, honestly. That would have been hilarious, but as a viewer, I would have been mad. Because the thing is, I honestly thought that there was going to be an announcement. Yeah. And we were told before Top 8 that there wasn't. Basically, anything. somebody saw James' shirt and was like, please don't wear that. It's <laughs> <laughs> basically Because usually they don't tell us anything. It's very rare that we yeah, have yeah, info. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And this was like the one time that we did, and it was right before Top 8, uh-huh. because you had the shirt on. Because I had the they like, shirt on. Yeah, they are like, probably don't do that. don't do that. Yeah. And I was like, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Because remember, last week we were like, I don't want, I was like, I don't want to set myself, but they've got to announce something. So I'm expecting them to announce something. So I thought, you know, it wouldn't have been that bad. To Me neither. I, what, what I honestly figured was that it wouldn't be Honda. It would be like Sodom or something because yeah, he's yeah, in the background yeah, yeah. of that stage. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I expected something too. Mm-hmm. So I did. I thought it would have been funny to do that, you know, but yeah. then I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. 
Um, no, there's no info, no update on dude, the o season. Olaf says hoping for something at NCR. Dude, I'm just, I would not. I, I'm just saying this not. right now, just in my opinion, just like. Just. <laughs> I mean, like, we don't have specific info. It's just. At this point? Yeah, after, I don't know. Like, because like I said, I didn't want to set myself yeah. up, right? And there yeah. was that great video that Justin recorded of Mena. Yes, And Mena's oh my just God. standing there. He's like, there's got to be something. And then, like, like it's... Waiting so after the tournament is over. Right. The stream is done. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, it Still was... Still waiting to was, see an announcement. It was so Ralph Wiggum. That's why I had the tweet. I was just like, you could see the moment his heart breaks. Because yeah. he was just like... Like you just saw the one per moment where just his expression yeah. changed, and it yeah. was so it was so brutal. Yeah, yeah. Mena was literally uh, they were literally sweeping up while Mena was still waiting, trying mm -hmm. to watch the stream. It's true, it was a sad sight. But yeah, I, I don't have any expectations now. Don't I, be Mena. <laughs> don't Mena yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bummer. I mean, I, I hope that that's wrong, but I. It's just it's a, it's a very strange decision. I don't know, but the time when I was most bullish about the future of the game was at the end of season two when they had the really good season three announcement, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then when season three was coming out and like wow, it turns out Sagat actually was like he looks cool. Like, right. Like, yeah, like I was yeah, like yeah. wow. Okay, so maybe from now on. It's going to be all good. And it wasn't like uh, the previous season where Zeku came out in November, right? Yeah. The last character came out in July, in right. August, right? right? We had a whole half a year to mess with that character. Right, for sure. And all, all the way up until right before Capcom Cup when they... Well, maybe even when they did the, the weird in-game ad thing, mm -hmm. I was like, that's weird, but implies new plans at, right. at a minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, probably mm -hmm. something else going to happen out of this. And now in season four, when I really legit like the game in a way that I haven't since maybe early season one, I don't know, mm -hmm. it's, been a, it's been a while since I've actually played the game this much and really enjoyed myself. Um, strangely, I feel a little, I feel not as optimistic for the future, even though it's a good game now. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, it, but it, that could be fixed. I don't know what the plans are. Maybe the plans are terrible. And so they just don't want to talk about. I don't know, <laughs> but if they're not, if there if there are like cool plans ahead, just I let us even, know that there are. I plans was just even and, hoping you know. that there was going to be an update to match the arcade, so we were going to have the BP and the and the CP again. You know, I just want the character points because I just want to be able to play other characters online without killing my rank. You know, I I have to go to a Smurf account to like try Birdie or Zeku or whatever like that or Sagat. Cause when I didn't, you know, I was like, hey, I'm at platinum again. Yay, let me play Zangief. And then it's just like every time you lose, it's just like they're yeah. like hatchet your points, hatchet yeah. your points. And then I know, I know you're you done. Mean. I know what you mean. I don't know, buddy. It's a strange situation. It's not good. I wish that there was more. I guess all there is left is to play the game. And I, like I said, I'm really enjoying that. Mm -hmm. But if you're somebody who isn't so into the game and maybe you're hoping that there's going to be some character release that'll get you back into it or some change that will get you back into it, I think you have to just say, this is the game. This is it. Maybe there's going to be another character this season because the character select screen looks weird. <laughs> right. Dude, but Marvel other versus than that, Capcom Infinite. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> maybe they just leave it that way. You don't know. I don't know. I really do like the game as it is, so I'm not. I'm not personally like upset in any sense. I'm just surprised that there yeah. isn't. I mean, more info about what's going on. The, the whole future. like try to find the silver lining and everything. I did see a tweet, and someone was like, you know, call me crazy, and this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I wouldn't mind seeing only a few characters this season because Street Fighter IV with 44 characters felt overwhelming and was inundated with characters. And, you know, having 35 already feels like a lot in this game. And, you know, I know exactly where, he, sure. where he's coming from because, like, every time you wanted to pick up a new character in Street Fighter IV, it was like, well, 
time to learn 44 matchups, you know, sure. and, and I felt that way with Blaze Blue. Like by the time oh, like yeah. Central Fiction came out, I got it on my Switch and I like turned it on and I looked at the character select screen. And I was like, I don't even know who half of these people are. Well, they look identical, half of them, unfortunately, but that, that, that's, doesn't, that doesn't help yeah, on the character that's, select screen. Yeah, that's definitely but true. But in, in terms of the gameplay, those characters are all super different from each other. In mm -hmm. SF4, there were like five archetypes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, come on, like, I don't know, whatever. I didn't think that was so tough, but in this game, I don't want that many more characters. Mm -hmm. I highly agree. I feel right. like there's there's a max to what I would really want, and we're approaching it. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, honestly, if they had like let's say three characters, four characters, just so we don't have an odd number on the character yeah. select screen, like I, I would be okay with that. And if that was like it, like if after yeah. that they were like, okay, done. This is the characters yeah. in the game. Get ready for. Street Fighter Six at some point in time, but or just, or just hey, we're gonna keep this is the game, and we hope you enjoy it, and mm -hmm. we'll make balance changes now and then. But like, mm -hmm. here it is, let's play. Hey, everybody, all right? The New hardest, stages, whatever. You know, I mean, just the, let us know something. Hardest part is that people want character announcements. People feel like character announcements makes a difference. Like I saw uh, in the you know Reddit Street Fighter on their tweet, they're like everybody's always like waiting for that character to pull them back in, but you know. The game's not going to change. If you haven't been able to find a character right now that's kind of made you really interested in the game, yeah. it'll be really hard to find one, even if it's a brand new character. Unless they just do something crazy, wildly different with the character. Could be. Know? But yeah, maybe you're a Third Strike player who is waiting for Alex and then his knees are backwards. Or maybe you're a Street Fighter Four player and you're waiting for Cody and then it turns out he's complete, it's absolutely a totally different character. Right, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's, I think that's not a good plan Yeah. to wait for it. So, in other words, but that's the problem, is that as much as people, you know, don't really realize that's the truth about it, everybody still just wants to see new characters and get excited about it, right? I mean, look, there's some people out there who are excited about the 17th Goku. Yeah, I'm sure there are. I've seen some I'm people. Sure I, I saw imagine. some tweets that they were really happy about getting the 24th Goku in For the sure. game. I, I'm sure you're right. It's gonna, it's gonna keep going up too. But... <laughs> Why not? I don't know how many Goku's there are in that universe. I mean... Yeah, it's. Uh, I do think it's true that we talk too much about a game being dead if it doesn't have stuff coming out for it all the time. That mm -hmm. is a concern I think that I share, but um, I, I don't need new characters, right? I feel like I'm okay on that. Mm -hmm. I would think I would accept a couple more, but like I like I said, I don't want that many more. I don't need constant changes. I don't need ba balance patches all the time. I just want to know the f the future and their plans for the future. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all that I'd like to know. Like, are they planning to make a new game? And mm -hmm. sh should I kind of think about that in terms of my investment in in the game, or should I? continue playing the game because they tell me they're going to support it for the next several years in terms of a, the competitive scene. Um, I mean, when the when there's no competitive scene anymore for SF5, there's an SF, SF6, I'm probably going to be playing SF6, to be honest. Well, I don't I don't imagine that this is going to be like a shoot. situation. Yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> well, I, I don't think it's going to be like a, how it is with Third Strike and Super Turbo for me where I'll just play those games forever. Mm -hmm. Probably not for SF5, I'll, even though I really enjoy it right now. I don't think it's like one of those all-time... Oh, I have yeah, to play it forever kind yeah, yeah. of games for me. Yeah. So I'll probably play SF6. So just let me know, like, what is the deal? Right. I just want yeah. some knowledge about what the plans are. I mean, I honestly, if they had, like, three characters in the next season, I really feel like that they should probably focus, maybe if they don't add new characters, focus something on a new mechanic. Give everyone a second B-skill, maybe, or add a new defensive mechanic into the game because that's... Oh, or fix the net code, but you know, like a lot of people have been really wanting that uh, new defensive mechanic. People have been yeah, talking about been talking it about lot, it. That's so. true. Yeah, I just uh, I just want in info. I just want I want to be able to plan a little bit. That's all. I don't I feel mean, like that's a drastic desire. To be fair, uh, uh, on Twitch DLC, they did remove characters in season three because Zangief, Zangief and Ryu had disappeared. Went ice fishing. Yeah. For a while. <laughs> Ryu was training up in the mountains, <laughs> lifting up huge boulders with an old yeah, man. Yeah. What did you think of that little uh, Itazan Sako matchup? Oh, pretty cool. Dude, 
I am. So they must have practiced. They it. for sure. Cause that. Can you imagine the dance, dude? I have actually tried. So there was a video a long time ago that uh, Wizard and I made to give away prizes, and we used the third strike. Remember how on the Dreamcast you could add systems to the game that didn't exist? So we just recorded a bunch of clips and turned on certain ones of them, and we, the contest was spot how many, mm. you know, non-real yeah. things could actually happen in this, right? And so the last match between was me and 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 uh, him was like Chun versus Dudley, and we scripted out this whole fight. That shit was impossible, yeah. dude. It was so hard to do. So the fact that they were able to do that consistently, like I can actually see some of the things they did to make it a little bit yeah. easier for themselves for timing wise, like yeah. getting the throw tech before the supers for and sure. stuff like that. But still, I was super impressed with, was with how they did that, dude. It was very cool. It reminded me of those old, I forget the name now, uh, n uncombo videos. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Where, uh, uh -huh, where uh -huh. there were combo videos, but nobody was taking damage, and there was mm -hmm. like weird little escapes underneath each button. Like somebody would do a sweep, but the other guy did stand short yeah, at the right yeah, time yeah, that yeah, moved yeah. himself away from the sweep. Like that was that's what it reminded me of. I don't that know if I should cool. just uh, maybe I should play it for people just yeah, so sure, they know what we're talking about. So. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely a good one. Were those called zero damage combos? I don't. I just I don't feel like that was right. But. I don't remember Tilt exactly. Down. Oops. Whoa, that was loud. Uh, hey. It's a little kitty cat. Let's, let's do this really quick. It's not going to be the greatest of uh, resolutions here because it is a Twitter video. But just so you guys can get an idea of it, here we go. <laughs> What if you do that whole thing and then you miss time the Ranos after the super? That's exactly what I was thinking. Like you just hit it one frame too late or something like that. So it was great. I mean, that's that's so cool. My favorite part though is like when I think it was Sako gets his uppercut blocked or or like he gets stunned. You see him reel back in his chair like whoa. You know, I was like, well done, Sako. Well yeah, done. It was it was good. Yeah. Good clip. <laughs> but dude, that clip got tweeted by every like a whole bunch of people were talking about it yeah it, it got to be one of those things where people will download the video and then re-upload it on their own twitter account and like check this twitter out I, this video mm -hmm. out i don't know who made it you know like that yeah i know who, who did who this, did this? <laughs> who did this yeah exactly oh god it was funny oh uh, man okay uh okay so um tekken 7 yeah it was one by shadow Mm -hmm. That was cool. Trungi got second place. Um, Sick geese, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I just don't know enough about the game to be able to say it, but it seemed cool. Yeah. It's fun. Geese is it's weird. I'm like, It's so funny that like when you play against geese and Akuma, all of a sudden, like I felt it too, when you play against Akuma, all of a sudden you have to start low blocking against these characters. It's like, because normally you don't take that much damage from the low block, yeah. but then geese, Akuma is just like sweeping the Tatsu and you're like, this is not right. So it's always interesting to me. I always wonder how much like the Tekken pros feel like they had to adapt to learn how to fight those characters. So pretty cool. It was really cool to watch. Uh, the crowd was going super wild while Poke Shop was up there naturally, but uh, they were they were really into it the whole time. It was really fun to watch and mm -hmm. like just again, even though I don't know the game very well, the crowd's like going wild. Like you know, uh, you you have to get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have yeah, to get yeah. into it. Uh -huh. so. But it's it's just so cool because it's like the again like slow motions and all this stuff. They've just done such a good job with the presentation of the game. 
Funniest part is I was sitting on the stage watching it the entire time. Yeah, you see me staring at the cheese puffs, don't you? Um, Trader Joe's brand reduced fat cheese puffs. 45% less fat than regular cheese puffs. I tried looking for the regular cheese puffs and they were nowhere to be found. So. I don't think that they would have the regular ones. You know that Trader Joe's, those signs that look like they're handwritten are all not actually handwritten? That they're actually all like produced and stuff like I that to make it. it to make it look more authentic and stuff like that it's all just part it's of the ruin for me it's just all part of the whole facade <laughs> oh they play they pay their employers well, employees well. <laughs> true true but um what was i saying oh i was sitting there on the stage watching it and i'm commentating it in my head like i'm oh, like yeah? i'm like actually commentating it so i'm just like sitting there going like oh it's going to be Oh, oh my god! Oh, that was nice. He was trying to, do and like one of the guys who was running, like help running the tournament on stage, like turns and looks at me. He's like, "Are you commentating?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, "Yes." <laughs> I was like, "This is what I do. I watch tournaments and I commentate like this." So this was not part of the Tekken World Tour because that doesn't start until next month. Uh, and so I feel like the attendance here, although it was good, it was the second most attended event. It was just below three hundred people. Mm -hmm. um, Probably would not, probably probably would have been higher if it had been part of that. But still, I mean, there were lots of good players, and it was really fun to watch. So, it was cool. What are you doing here? I was just trying to reduce the crunch on the microphone. That's all. Got it. Soul Caliber Six, also very cool. And you know, I mean, it, it was cool to see Klob do really well with Astaroth. Lolo M MBZ Lolo MX won it. Klob got second. Yeah, with Yoshimitsu, uh, that was um, Lolo won it with Yoshimitsu. Mm -hmm. Klob got second with Astaroth. I, of course, was rooting for Party Wolf, but, you know, shout out to Klob. Yeah, you know, shout out to Klob. That was a character that previous to the patch, everyone said was not good at all. Um, and then after the patch... Well, I mean, they said that he was probably the worst, but that, you know, in the context yeah, of yeah, yeah, Soul yeah, yeah. Six, like, he wasn't some garbage character. It's he like just... Panda, essentially, in yeah, Tekken, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... But, you know, to see him do so well with Astaroth and just doing some crazy stuff with that character, really, really fun to watch. I need to sit down and watch the entire top eight again. I His reads were so good. Right? His reads were amazing. Dude, the pressure was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, he knew every time the opponent wasn't going to hit a button, mm -hmm. and, like, did the stomp, like, I'm plus, mm -hmm. and, like, uh -huh. you got to deal with this all day. It so. was super good. Yeah. Really, really fun to watch for me. I said really good for 45% less fat. I know, these are legit. This whole bag was like a buck 80. Really? I might have to stop by a Trader Joe's then and pick up some of these things to get less fat che cheese puffs. On the other hand, the fact that they're cheese puffs means that there's a lot of air in there. There's, you're not eating a lot of like food. That's fine. Yeah. But that's good because it just gives you that snack satisfying crunch, you know? Agreed. Yeah. I'm telling you, Trader Joe's is a great place. Even if they have mass-produced signs it turns out <laughs> i guess but yeah it was it was cool i really like watching soul Calibur six that was i mean for me maybe the best maybe the second best top eight between that and street fighter for me but i mean um, tekken was, was really, really good, good too. it was definitely really good all three of them were really, it was really good. good and of course i didn't get to see a lot of the other ones yeah so i sure. didn't see the dragon ball one i didn't see like unist and all that stuff like <laughs> but you know <laughs> I Dragon know. Ball Fighters. This was attended very well. Yes. By top level players, at least. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Goichi won it. Second place was Kazunoko. Third place was Dogura. Fourth place, finally, an American, Hook Gang God. Fifth place is Tied, Tachikawa, and Sonic Fox. And Super Are you Chris sure G, Goichi place. won it? I could have swore I saw the stage where the person holding the trophy had Sonic Fox's. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the the fox head on so no it was Goichi he actually put on Sonic Fox's oh, really? mask and did he beat Sonic Fox or something did I don't know he just wore the he just wore it on the stage so apparently he was popping off in Sonic Fox's costume which was actually pretty cool dang does America suck in DBFZ now I don't know I, I mean don't know I mean like honestly <laughs> Sonic Fox might just be thinking too much about MK11 right now to to to, to worry about. Yeah, I know uh, he was playing the stress test over the weekend. So. I'm sure he was. Yeah, yeah. He was. God, who would do that? Who would leave the venue after they're done commentating at like 4 p.m. and crack out on MK11 until like 11 o'clock or something whenever you showed up or it was whatever, you know. Who indeed? <laughs> <laughs> who indeed? Man, actually, I did go eat first, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. I thought Romanova did a good job on commentary. 
cool. I watched a little bit of Dragon Ball Top Eight. Oh, cool! I haven't got to see. It. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm I'm happy about that because right before that, I had the EXO Academy session where I talked to her about. Oh, that's cool. Commentary. So it was all me. Probably all you. It was all me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, probably all you. Yeah, but I'm really happy for her. I'm really proud that she got to do that top eight, especially because we were talking about it. She was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do top eight, but then she got to do top eight, so I mm. thought that was super cool. Oh, yeah. that's really awesome. Good job, James. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blaze Blue Cross-Tech Battle was won by Flux. Second place was Vermilion. Uh, Elyon, Dante Thomas after that. Uh, what I watched was a lot of fun of this. I didn't that's watch right. that much I heard, because I was I playing Mortal. Hear- I heard that DOA top eight was super good as was well. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna have to check that out. Definitely gonna have to check that out because I want to see what top level DOA play looks like. Because I really, honestly, haven't watched a lot. Okay, of Okay, fair enough. So, yeah, yeah. I've watched it a couple times, and I and I do think it's fun. I mean, I don't know the game. I, you know, mm-hmm. it has to be explained to me like by commentators, but mm-hmm. it does seem fun. Guilty Gear X Rev Two is on by Gasly. What did I say about Street Fighter Five recently? I didn't. I did I say anything about Street Fighter Five? You're always talking about Street Fighter. I know, right? I'm always talking about how good it is and how much I love every, all of the systems of the game. Traveling with James and he doesn't (laughs) stop talking about SF5. It's a chore. (laughs) I talk about how much Cammy is just like made for me. (laughs) Like I swear me and Cammy are like married in that game, dude. She plays exactly how I want to play. Marvel (laughs) vs. Capcom Infinite was won by Tyson. Nice work. Not enough damage getting second. Mm -hmm. Ninja Nam after that. DOA. I saw that. Uh, who was it? Uh, go back up again. It was Ketsui who did beat uh, Christy in the tournament. Said that you know Christy was like one of his idols and Aww. stuff, and it was actually amazing for him to actually get to that point. So. That's cute. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. DOA six was won by Crazy Steady. Oh, look at some of these names. I haven't seen these in a while. Um, second place was Blackberry, then Kelly Delorean, then uh, Excalibur Blaze yeah. got fourth. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard from, from him in a while. Sonic Fox and Hoodless got fifth. Quiggle got seventh. Electrified Man also. I wonder cool. if you're Quiggle, are you frustrated that your little brother is starting to do better than you at, at DOA tournaments? Or are you still proud of him? I think, I, think you, I, I think if you're frustrated, you would just explode. Like, that, that's a level of frustration that, <laughs> if you're frustrated that your brother's good at fighting games and your brother is Sonic Fox. Right, uh-huh. You know. It, but I mean, it's you like have you, to get beyond you would, it. You, you would actually think, have to. You would think like that. What your game? That you'd still be able to beat him in your I game. I feel like you just have to be like, look, man. <laughs> hey, you know, you're maybe the best ever. So, <laughs> all right. Oh man. Yeah. My brothers never beat me in fighting games. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. because they don't. They don't try. They don't care. They don't. They don't have time to spend their entire... They have a life, okay? <laughs> uh, my brother uh, does play Smash. He's been playing Smash lately. Mm-hmm, Smash mm-hmm. Uh, Ultimate. And the last time I played against him, he was like, man, you're a fighting game player. You're, like, you're, do, you're adapting. And mm-hmm. this is annoying. Uh, come on. But yeah, he's playing. He's, actually, number, he's actually better than me at Smash. Number one so. excuse of all fighting game play- of the non-fighting game players. I have a life, okay? I know, yeah. I actually like go out and see people. And Whoa. Stuff. Injustice was won by Tac Gillo. Or Tac Gillo, maybe. So he was... Um... Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But yeah, that means he was first out of, what was it, 17 people? I believe it was 17. Because honestly, like, all the NRS players are at home, and they are playing that stress test, I guarantee Correct. you, so. What? What? How do you have this inside info? Who gave inside info on what? Let's not bring it up. <laughs> I don't like this. Uh, I don't like this, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to the next topic. What is it, what is it, what, should I read this line here? That, um, I don't know what you're talking uh, about. User BP Bram Muffin says that a little birdie told me David's brother whoops oh. him with Luigi. Yeah. Man, I'm going to chew real loud. It's actually, it actually wasn't even that loud. Too. Really? It was, was yeah. loud in my own head. Yeah, it is, so. I can't believe this. <laughs> it would be funnier if David used Mario, actually, if Mario was losing to Luigi. <laughs> Maybe I played Dr. Mario, but... Oh, uh, that's true, that's true. All right, we're moving on. 
Pokemon tournament, the X one by a thanks a lot. That's cool. All right, Smash Ultimate one by Salt one, and Brawl Hollow is one by Sandstorm. <laughs> Justin Wong won Street Fighter Alpha two. Third strike was won by Nobuo. Then second place was Manao. Then third place was Justin. Then fourth was Chris G. That sounds right. Yeah. Super Turbo was won by Justin Wong. Wong. <laughs> Flash, Flash G. G got second Who we didn't even place. know was there until we ran into him outside of Spondovitz, dude. That's true. Shout outs to um, Washed Up Scrub. Man, he didn't get top eight in Third Strike. What a scrub for sure. <laughs> I'm still thinking about this secret viewer. Who's this, huh? <laughs> I must know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, that's it for final round. Again, seemed like a good event. I had a good time there, but I didn't spend that much time there. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to the beta, there was also the... Yeah. Well, oh, I mean, I guess we'll talk about the Smash tournament later on, right? Yeah, so yeah we'll, we'll do We'll talk about that later on, yeah, so... for sure. Spondivitz is all right, as far as the restaurants around there go. We didn't go this year, We though. didn't go this year. Louisiana Bistro is the place to go. That's the truth right That's there. That's the truth. If you want... God, that red beans and rice is so good. I've had it for two years. Just to recommend the jambalaya. Jambalaya... Super good. A little spicier than I was expecting it to be, so it was actually kind of hard for me to eat, but even their bread is amazing. Like, I went there and ate by myself, and they were like, hey, you want some bread? I was like, yeah. So they yeah. brought me one of those loaves just for me, and yeah. I was just like, oh. Oh, they're good. Oh, they're oh. good. I was definitely sniffing that bread, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh, okay. wow. But um, even their desserts, their beignets were really good. The uh, I don't sniff cream puffs, cheese puffs, okay? Why not? But Because they're not bread. But uh, their carrot cake, super legit. Their carrot yeah, cake carrot cake was super good. Their beignets were good. That's true too. Mm -hmm. I recommend that place. Spondovitz is a little bit more happening. It's like a livelier kind of so joint. Rate the bread out of ten. Uh, maybe six or seven. Wow, really? Okay. I've had some good bread in my life. Yeah, I know, but it was it was good. Good bread. It was good bread. Well, that I mean, that's on the upper yeah. half of the bread scale. Yeah. The breadometer. Yeah, but it's not very high. I mean, it's not very high. I mean, if it was a video game review, it would be crap. <laughs> yes, it would suck. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Anyway, enough about final round. What do you want to do here? You want to talk about Mortal? Sure. Do you want to take a break, or do you want to talk about Mortal right away? Let's talk about Mortal. Because we've been going on for about an hour already. Wow. Okay, then let's take a break. All right. We'll be right back, and when we come back, we will talk about the Mortal Kombat stress test. Mortal Kombat. I don't know what the hell that was about. I, I and I'm going to do some sleuthing. Sleuthing? Some viewer sleuthing. <laughs> Get this nice picture here from Chris Bond, of course. He has both of our pictures that I put up here of uh, Pope Chop here. Hey, do you have the video of them all dancing to the No Round Brown song? Uh, someone would have to link it to me on Twitter. If someone could find it on Twitter, I will definitely link it. Please play it on stream. Yeah, Please, I'll, can we find I'll, that? I'll play the No Round Brown song, yeah. <laughs> that was so good. It's Bonism. B-A-H-N-I-S-M. Chris Bond. He's also the guy who took the picture that we have on our Twitter headers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. Are you doing some sleuthing right now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Art. And thank you for the subscription to Starix. Subscribing for 26 months. Whoa. Starix has been a longtime supporter of Ultra Chen TV. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. Much appreciated. Over two years now, dude. That's so crazy. Mm. Ooh, wow, you got some stuff going on? All right, let me, let me see the Twitter. What's going on? What are you doing? Um, Wasminator uh, says that he has a chance to play MK11 tomorrow. He's, a, he's an Australian player. Legit dude. Why am I getting... Oh, this thing actually went live. That was weird. This page actually unpaused itself. I don't even know how. Because I started hearing an echo. And I was like, what the hell? Okay. Oh, yeah.
got double cheese puff eating action here between the two microphones. Cheese puffs. Mm. Very crunchy and cheesy goodness. 45% less fat than your normal <laughs> cheese puff. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the video games. <laughs> First of all, that wasn't me. People on stream think that. Think they that thought you were me. doing the, the, the ASMR? I do. Wasn't me. Let's talk about Mortal Kombat number 11. Well, did we want to see the No Round Brown song before we Oh, start? I figured we would put that up for the chat about the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call, good call. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Not quite yet. Anyway, yeah, there was a stress test over the weekend. It was to test the online play for the upcoming video game release called Mortal Kombat the 11th and we played it I brought my PlayStation all the way to Atlanta we have a games monitor and games backpack that I brought too so we could like play and all, all you also stuff have there. the LGP bro too uh -huh, so. I got an LGP to record everything so, so we recorded a lot we got like 70 gigs of stuff yeah that there's gonna be a lot of footage coming up onto our Indeed. ultra Gen channel so definitely check that out there sure will be yeah it was Definitely worth bringing all that stuff because we played it a lot, and uh, I guess there's a bunch to say about it. Since it was a stress test of the online play system, even before we get into the gameplay, what'd you think about the online play, the connections so and stuff? We were doing it through our phone tethering, and sometimes through the really terrible Econolodge Wi-Fi. Again, we're at Econolodge. If you're, if you're not from this country, it's a bad motel. All right, mm -hmm, it's like a mm -hmm. bad chain, cheap motel, cheap chain motel, and this was a particularly bad one, honestly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we were using their Wi-Fi, yeah. and we already know the quality of hotel Wi-Fi. Yeah. Look, I'll say this: when there was a bad match, it was so bad that it would stutter to the point where it would just disconnect. It just died. But every other match that I played, I mean, it felt flawless. It was buttery. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, we've never played offline, so we don't have a comparison point. Sure. But. I never felt like I wasn't able to do the things that I wanted to do, right? Maybe it will, because when I first played Injustice, I thought online was amazing. The first Injustice, okay. even though it wasn't, just because I'd never played offline. Then I right, played offline, right, and then I right. went back online, and I was like, what the hell all <laughs> right. happened all of a sudden? But even having said that, I don't feel like it was a problem. I, I felt that I could react easily the whole time. And yeah, my experience was the same as James's. Either the match was good and playable and I felt fine mm -hmm. or it just didn't just to get disconnected right. but that only happened a few times the whole time right I mean my biggest issue was that I had to play on a pad instead of a joystick but outside of that, that like it was it was fine as far so. as the online play goes mm -hmm. it was really good and they continue to show you whether the opponent is playing on a Wi-Fi or on a uh, wired connection, mm -hmm. which I like. They did that in Injustice, and yeah, we definitely got a bunch of matches declined because they saw us on Wi-Fi. So I think that's true. I yeah. would say that much. I think that is true. Also, our record was like a hundred and something versus like forty something or whatever, like that. Dude. So people probably come in with like one and seven, and they're like, "I don't want to play this guy." We definitely got declined a lot. Mm -hmm. at, at one stretch, there were like five or six people in a row who declined. That happened a few times, actually. And I, I think it was <laughs> happening to a lot of people because every time we would get paired up with someone with a similar record as yeah. us and we'd start playing, like nobody would quit. Right, right, We would right, just yeah. rematch forever because right. we're like, oh, someone who's playing seriously and like is actually playing us and we get to experiment and stuff. For sure. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that was awesome. Um, oh, some people could be looking for their friends. That is actually that, true. That did happen for sure. There were people mm -hmm, who I... Mm -hmm saw on Twitter say that they waited 40 minutes just doing it over and over and over again looking for the right person. Mm. So that happened, but I don't think that's why we were getting declined all the time. I think it's because for a while our record was literally 100%. Yeah, that's because you fought against a person who didn't know how to block standing and you did Baraka's back, th back two on him and you did Baraka's back two on him is it back two or back three for Brock? It's back two. Oh, and it's okay. splat, so they get knocked down. Mm -hmm. And they get knocked down at about exactly the right range where another back two hits at max distance. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept doing it. And they kept getting hit by it. And that happened a lot. And I just kept laughing because I was just like, 
don't you want to like learn what to do with your character? And David is just sitting there back to this guy to death, giggling. It's <laughs> true. Cracking up the whole time he's doing it. And it's just back to, back to, back to, back to, <laughs> finish him, back to. <laughs> yeah, the back to finisher. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, I was just like, come on, dude. Like, don't you want to learn something? <laughs> no way. And David's like, no, this is this is all I need right now. So oh, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun. You'll see that footage hopefully. So. Yeah, I'll put that up there. <laughs> this dingus will never learn. Yeah, that. there was a bunch of that. There was also a bunch of people who thought that Baraka's uh, back three low was unblockable, so I just kept doing like meaty back three one string, back three one, back mm -hmm. three one. It just kept on happening. Yeah. Yeah, there was, uh, there was some dingusry out there, but that was a lot of fun. I, it was funny because you went with Bracca, I went with Scorpion. So we actually got to experience both of those characters a lot. Yeah. And I got blown up by another Scorpion, and then you got blown up by a Scorpion, but that's apparently because they were all using this extra feature called Misery Blade. Okay, and so... And I was cheating. <laughs> uh, they don't deserve... To, uh, anyways, yeah, okay. So as far as the gameplay goes, you could pick three characters, only Scorpion... Baraka and Scarlet, they came preloaded with three variations, but you could change those. Mm -hmm. And one of them, the Scorpion one, the Fire Dude one, I don't remember what it was Has called. one slot. Had one either. open, so a lot of people were just changing that, you know, whatever. Um, I can't believe Misery Blade is only one slot. Dude. I think it's two, actually. Is it? I think it's two. Yeah. No, because there's only one slot open. Yeah, you could just change it. I mean, you could just, oh, really? you could oh. just edit it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, that's what a lot of people are doing. And you didn't need to be with the fire dude one. It could be with whatever. But mm -hmm. in any case, the gameplay, the game, the characters were uh, all interesting. I felt I'm not like particularly enamored with any of those three. Mm -hmm. Historically speaking, I thought Baraka was a throwaway forever. Mm -hmm. I've always thought he was a boring character. Till you found the back two. <laughs> and he has well, it's because of the command grab. Yeah, that's I know, the only I reason know. I was playing him. So I played cheap. that character because he was he had a command grab. He does have a command grab, and. I actually had a lot of fun, and it wasn't just because of the command grab with the character. I thought that his, he just has like fun footsies, you know, he's got mm -hmm. good pressure, safe pressure. Well, back 4-4, four, four, or was it forward 4-4? Four, four, four? The lunge kick? The knee into yeah, the kick, four, yeah. Four, four, yeah. That thing is good. Very good, very so, good. Dude, I had, what, before I knew what I was doing, I had one person who killed me just by doing forward 4-4, four, 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 and I was like, what am I supposed to do yes. this? Because I didn't know how to, I didn't realize. Were that. you the back to get hit at by? At first, yeah. And then the problem also was I was trying to get used to my button config and I couldn't find the oh, buttons. Oh, for sure. So yeah, that was. But, if, but was that when it was on my button still? You hadn't changed it yet. No, I had. So what happened was the way that I play Street Fighter is I have my punch buttons and and kick buttons like diagonally like this, right? Instead of diagonally like this. And so I tried that in Mortal Kombat. I tried to switch it so that the top button was weak punch and the right button was heavy punch. So I just rotated it a little bit. And um, I don't know why, but like my brain would still try to do the original config even though I was trying to use my Street Fighter style buttons. So I eventually had to switch the default buttons and then it worked for me. So while I was on the wrong buttons, I, like, I kept trying to jump in with light punch and I kept jumping in with kick. I tried to uppercut and I would come out with like, it was weird, I don't know. It's, my brain doesn't work very well, so. Alrighty. Oh, is one of the mics going wild? Is that me, maybe? I think it's rubbing against the Injustice logo. So. Fine. Okay. I'll cover that up. I mean, open it up. Uh, anyway, so... Baraka, I thought, was very cool. I, I only played his command grab stance. Almost only played his command grab stance. I just tried the other ones to see what they did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I liked Flag Day, the one where he has the, like, he's running with the flag. Mm -hmm. You know, he can hit you with the flag, too. Because the one that they gave for Baraka for the command grab one didn't have like a good knockdown mid-screen kind mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. combo tool, um, but that was a good one. The like knockdown flag was cool, and the fact that he could run with the flag and he's like armored, I guess. And I tried a bunch of stuff to beat him, but it didn't seem like there was anything. He just like runs run through stuff. Maybe just okay. fatal blow. I don't know. That seemed good. And then the one that had gutted, the one where he goes bam and he lifts you up, and then you get a full juggle out of it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. That seemed like the best one to me, just because that that's one. so much damage available from it. Dude, I mean, with the fact that the meter self re re refills yeah. itself, if you ever had a full bar, you would do like 45% damage on a simple combo. It would just boom, boom, do meter burn, throw them up into the air, juggle them with chi 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 chi, and then like meter burn that, and then that was like 45 to 50%. I lost so much life on that. It was like more than comboing into a super. Legit. It was crazy. It's legit. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was more than uh, Fatal Glove. Um, I didn't think that Bone Deep was that crazy. I thought I felt personally that Bone Deep was the weakest of those three variations. Dude, I don't. It I, didn't have like the strong footsie into knockdown special that I like wanted. The back two versus the command grab. I mean, it's I good. Mean, they look the same. It's good. Right? Don't, don't like, get me wrong. Ugh. But each one of those is like a hundred damage. You know, it's like not gonna. Kill right, 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 right. You have to believe me. I know exactly how many back twos it takes to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly how many, and it's a lot. It's a lot. So I didn't think that that was super good. Well, good, but maybe not like the best. And then the other characters seem seem really fun too. I mean, Scorpion, his movement's always good, and that was there. He I has good footsies. Dude, I don't know why people are complaining about how fast Scorpion's teleport is. I really, honestly, didn't think it was that good. It felt it, like normal Scorp teleport. It was just so punishable. Yeah. But I've seen a lot of people say that they need to slow it down. But it's just like you just sit there and block a button. It's not like it's a left right mix yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. You have a block button. Right. Yeah. Uh, you just sit there and block all but day. But that's like always been Scorpion. He could mm -hmm. always have done that. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're playing against Scorpion, you have to think of him as a character that is that attacks weirdly. Mm -hmm. He's not just like a regular grounded footsie right. character. Although he does seem to have that in this game. But he's he's the weirdo who can just be next to you all of a sudden. It's always mm -hmm. been that way. So. Yeah, exactly. And and you know when I played him, I originally liked the chain one because I liked the little chain move. I was using it for juggles or whatever like that. But the more I played it, I fought against another person who used Fire Breather, including the stance, right? But I didn't have the stance because yeah. I didn't change my character. But I did think Fire Breather was stronger. I never tried Boone's main, um, but... Um, because I guess you can cancel the teleport into nothing. Yeah. And that, that's probably pretty good, yeah. you know, thinking about it. But I definitely like the fire breather one a lot. Because that rushing thing where he just, like, grabs mm -hmm. you. It was really fast. It's really... And it catches people. Because there is a block button, I just caught people walking backwards. Like, like yeah, they're like, let's yeah. time to build some... Dip, and then, bam! For sure. And it was, like, safe on block. Like, I couldn't was figure it out. I don't know. I like, it was safe. I don't think it was. I but, like, so. I very rarely got punished okay. for it. It wasn't like the teleport where I did it and I just died every time it got blocked. Like, okay. I would do that move and someone would go 1-1 one, one and it, they, I would just block it. And I'd oh, like, really? Oh, I thought that Okay. Yeah, it is jab punishable. Okay, so a lot of it might have just been l online timing, yeah, or or was... like me, I was try I would block Scorpion teleport and I would try to mash uppercut to to hit it. But I'm not a pad player. I'm telling you right now, my thumb. I even back in the Nintendo days, I played claw style <laughs> on the Nintendo pad. Okay, so I've never been able to mash quickly with my thumb. So when I'm trying to sit there mash uppercut. I know it's just I just miss the timing of it. You yeah. know what I mean? But if I had a joystick, I'd just be like, sure. you know what I mean? No problem. So. Yeah, it, w it would have been nice if we had had a joystick or something, but okay. we did not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Scarlet was relatively rare online, I felt. Like, I think I only ran into a few Scarlets the whole time. But she, it seemed to me like she has really good footsies, good set play, she like had good, good range. Great dude, range, for range. sure. That Blood Ball seems really useful. Like, she I seems really good to me. Fought. So many scorpions. I yeah, scorpion was everywhere. Nothing but scorpion mirror matches yeah. all day. He was everywhere. He was everywhere. And and honestly, I really feel like that misery blade stance was like the best thing in the game, dude. That's like, what I. So I certainly think that in like hour one or day one, that misery blade seems really good. If you're not familiar with it, it's just a stance that you can cancel a string into, and then from there, there's an overhead, a low, or a little sword butt, he, which is very fast. Or even just nothing, or into, nothing or into regular attacks. Yeah, yeah. you can like you cancel can it. basically mist cancel it like yeah. Johnny, and it's just it because like I noticed that for Scorpion, most of his strings were unsafe. Yeah, it wasn't like Brock where you had knee into kick and it was like safe on block, right? Scorpion didn't have a lot of that. It felt like mm. that had the good range. But to be able to stance cancel and then, and then give you a mix-up off of that, I thought was amazing. So, But those the overhead and low are unsafe. You, yeah, can, yeah, you yeah. can really punish them. So the thing that really kept it together was the little sword butt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So you can't, you're can't. you not always just looking for, oh, he's always going to finish it into the overhead or low. This is going to be 50-50 that you got to block, mm -hmm. but I'll punish either way. There's also, like, he could cancel it and walk away, or mm -hmm, you could block, mm -hmm. or you could do the little sword butt. Right. It definitely seems good. 
I kind of suspect that it won't be that good ultimately when people are doing flawless blocking consistently. Right, that's, but that's a concern. But again, you could cancel it any time. You could do one, two into it. You could sure. do one into sure. it. You could just raw the, do it. I'm not sure that I want to be pressing buttons a lot up close in this game. I'm mean, uh, just right. sort of thinking yeah, about yeah, how it's yeah. going to go down okay. the road. Okay. Maybe that's wrong, but that's my kind of guess at the risk of flawless blocking. I, I feel like you know one of the things that they did was they purposely put Misery Blade off of there just to see if people would customize it and put it on there. Yeah. I just have this weird internal monologue in my head that someone in the office is like, Misery Blade is too good. And the other guy's like, it's not that good. And they're like, fine, let's test it by putting it in the game but not actually giving it to anyone and see if everyone finds it. And that's the only thing that they add because that's the only thing that yeah. Scorpion players ever added. That's funny. Okay? And Misery Blade was really good. That's funny. Like, yeah, I look. know I know. if I had equipped it, I would have just dominated everybody for free. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I would have did a lot better. I would have yeah, did a lot better. It was better good. It was sure. helpful, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is true. Look, I mean, what Oryx says is that nothing's good or bad in a beta stress test. That's true. Everything's going to change once the game mm -hmm. comes out. Um, and we don't know how it will change. Look at Street Fighter V. rebalanced, Look at course. Street Fighter V Beta 1. Completely different game than what Street Fighter V came out. All the... Things that you was were it? able to do was gone. Like Ryu, everyone could combo off of lights. Ryu had like could do the strong, remember. strongs, walk up, half a oh, yes. light kick into Tatsu. Chun Li had a better stomp cross up, and you mm. could do it by doing it at down forward and all these things like that. You can't do that anymore. No, know. it's only straight down. It drives me nuts. That's a bad idea. Yeah, because mm. before I, I that's why I wanted to play Chun because I was just doing yeah. instant head stomp and like shenanigans all over. But now I can't do it at all. So. Weird, dude. Oh, that's right. Keep Heathcote combo into grabs. grabs. I do remember yeah. that one. That's probably good that it's not there mm -hmm. <laughs> anymore. Um, anyway, yeah, all the balance is going to change. So I'm not too concerned about that. But the characters were all, I thought, interesting and fun. And they all had good tools. They all had interesting tools, maybe more accurately. Yeah, I mean, I was really happy with that side of it from the mm -hmm. character perspective. I wish that there had been more, but because that wasn't the focus. Like, I'm, you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. They were just trying to yeah, test yeah, out yeah, the, yeah. the online. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, the the game engine though. What do you think about the game engine? I mean, my biggest problem was I didn't get to use a lot of it because I just didn't know how to do any of it. Okay. So I, against the Misery Blade Scorpion that I fought, who destroyed me, he just knocked me down, and it, it felt like MKXL again. I knocked down once, and I died because he just got to me to me and everything. Because I didn't know how to do a wake up attack. Okay. I didn't know how to roll. Okay. I didn't know how to flip out of the air. I didn't know how this was this was after the tournament and I just went back and I was just playing it and I was too lazy to go look it up online because <laughs> I didn't I wanted to keep rematching this guy. You oh, know for what sure. I mean? So mm -hmm, I never found out how to do it. Even after you told me how to do it, I couldn't do it because to me, up and a button or left, right and a button means hold that direction and mash the button. But I don't think that works. I think you have to hit them both at the same time. Because I, I got hit out of a juggle combo. I held up and mash block. Nothing happened. I got knocked down. I hold left and I was mashing, you know, interactable or stance switch. Stand every switch. button, nothing would ever happen. I was holding up and mashing buttons and I couldn't get them to come out. Hmm. So I'm not sure. Yeah, you, so you do have to press at the same time as Wasminator said. So I just never actually got, got a chance to use a lot of those. But from what I've seen... I like a lot of the mechanics. I like the wake up system that's in there. They just built a wake up into it. Yeah. I like the fact that there's the two options of it. Every character has an up two or an up three. Some weird button the, choices, by the way. I agree with that, but mm. that's how it is. And the up two is like a launcher. It's an unsafe launcher that's not fully invincible. Actually, maybe not everybody's is, but I know everybody I got that hit, I saw. I know was. I got when I hit by Baraka. He got combos For sure, Baraka's was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that. Uh, uh -huh. And up three is not. A launch. It's just a hit, and it is fully invincible. Right. Uh -huh. So it's a and safer it seems option. Safe. Yeah. It's a but again, I don't option. know if that's a character by character. But thing. you know, like one of the, the guy that I was fighting, he would roll all the time on his wake up. So every time I knocked him down, I wouldn't get the cool mix ups on him. You know, because he would just roll I away see. and stuff. And then he would also drop out of my combos, and then I would whiff a spear, and then he would get <laughs> up and just be like. Hmm, let me check my phone for the maximum damage combo. Oh, it this is what I should do because Scorpion's like. God damn it, I don't, I just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, so there's a, instead of the breaker Dang, that Mortal Kombat has Jimmy. had. 32 months. Wow, thanks man, that's pretty cool. Jeez, okay, Appreciate it. okay. Instead of the breaker that has been in Mortal Kombat for the last couple of iterations, there's a, I think it's called Break Away this time, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just a fall out of juggle combo. It's not, it's not useful if they're 
ground comboing you. It's only, as far as I know, only uh, to get out of a juggle, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it just knocks it just knocks you down. You are armored. You still take damage as you're falling, but you don't get juggled right, unless it's uh, by a fatal blow, which will blow that up. But when you land, you're there for on the ground for a second, maybe a little bit, mm -hmm. and then you get up and you can do whatever. But in the meantime, if the opponent had done some like long launching tool, like a spear, right, or even like Baraka, like when I was doing his four two one string, if I just did that because I thought that they weren't gonna do the uh, breakaway, mm -hmm. then I could get punished too because I'm just right, doing yeah, this yeah, still. Yeah. So there's a mix up there, and I a mean, lot of people who I've read online are not happy about that. They don't want to be punished for having done a combo and then not guess whether the opponent's going to do the breakaway. Well, I, I'm not sure I'm mad about that part. I'm mad about the part that the times that I dropped my combo on purpose because I correctly predicted that they were going to flip out of it, and there wasn't anything I could do about it. You can't punish them unless you have a fatal blow, right? Like you literally, like I literally stopped my combo. He flipped yeah. and he landed on the ground. I walked up to him. Just regular pressure again. And it was just regular pressure again. Like I feel like I should be able to combo him out of that. You know what I mean? Like I feel like if I predict, or even try to throw him or something, because I could throw people out of the wake up roll, which I yes. did several times, which was cool. Mm -hmm. But like when, if you predicted that they were going to drop and I did, I just like sat there and I was like, well, this is cool. You know what I mean? I just felt like that there should have been something I should have been able to, I should have gotten a free combo off of that or hmm. something. You know what I mean? If I, if like, if they could fall out of the combo and punish me for doing this, I should be able to stop my combo and punish them for falling out of the combo if I properly predict it. That's how I felt about the whole entire thing. So I guess I'm cool with how it is. I don't really need there to be a big change. When you do a breakaway, it costs both of your defensive meters. So in the first place, you can't have done. You can't do it if you've like done a wake up recently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or some of the special moves that require that either. And once you do do it, then there's no wake up for a long time, right? Because it does mm -hmm, take quite mm -hmm. a while to come back. So some I feel people like, were saying it doesn't take long enough. Well, maybe, but it does take a while for now. And I feel like that actually is quite a big penalty mm -hmm. to not have your your defensive tools there for a while. That means that you can't do uh, flawless block into up to punish, mm -hmm. for example. Like the, I think I think that's a, a pretty big deal. I think so. I'm I'm cool with playing the game of if I think that there's a chance that you're going to do breakaway, then I'll just end with like an uppercut. I do this many times. Mm -hmm. I just did an uppercut, and it was while they were falling because I had correctly predicted that uh -huh. they would do it, uh -huh. and they take the uppercut damage, but then I recover pretty quickly, and now I can pressure. Right. So, so uh, that's fine. I mean, me. I would I like it. I, I'm not sure. I would have to test it a little bit more. But if that state, while they're lying on the ground, like if they're not invulnerable, I like think they're, they're invulnerable. Right. So if they weren't invulnerable but could only block, I would even be okay with that. You know what I mean? Well, so they do have to wake up blocking. Right, but then I just make it so that, you know, boom, while they're lying there, you can just start attacking them right away. You don't even have to think about proper meaty timing on them. You know what I mean? Because okay. you can just go at them. It's just one of those states in Mortal Kombat where they can't attack. They yeah, can just block. like how in, that exists. in Unist, if after you tech the throw, the other person's minus, but they can always block. So even though you can put a button into yeah. them, they can always block. Yeah. They just can't do anything, you yeah. know what I mean? That, unless they had an uppercut. Yeah. Oh, Mortal Kombat does have that state. It's yeah, been around yeah. forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, again, I'm fine with it, but, I, you know, it's cool. And then did you see anybody flawless block? Did you do it? So I flawless never... blocking is pressing the block button just as... It's just defending. It's just defending, right. So you're blocking mm -hmm. just as the hit comes to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, I never did it. I never saw anybody do it to me. If I even did it by accident, I didn't notice because I just didn't know what it looked like, basically. Dude. The only time I ever saw it was when you did it that one time on purpose, and that was it. So Yeah, yeah. I, 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 did, I did use it. Um, I felt the coolest application of it was flawless blocking a scorpion spear at near max screen and having enough time to dash in, dash in, and then do back forward to <laughs> command grab punish with Baraka nice. from like forever away. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is that once you do it, you then get the option to have your reversals, which are again these up two or up three, right. mm -hmm. sort of only those situation moves. And that means that you can do a flawless block into your up two for a launcher. So then you get a lot of damage, right? But that's also at the cost of two meters, right? It one defensive and it one... It meters, yeah, right. for sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wait, does flawless blocking cost meter? I don't think flawless blocking does, but... Um, no, the the follow-up But the follow-up does, yeah, 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 does yeah, yeah. definitely uh, cost one of uh, each, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. 
uh, at a minimum, right? Or maybe it is the flawless blocking does, mm -hmm. but for mm -hmm. sure when you do flawless blocking up to both, right. you take one of, of each. Um, I'm a little worried about that. I think that that may be too good mm -hmm. because, you know, there's a lot of strings in Mortal Kombat that have gaps in the middle of them. That's right. not unheard uh -huh. of. Uh -huh. And I don't know if there's strong counterplay to uh, beating a fi a flawless block in that right. instance. Like, is like what use is there going to be out of a string that has a gap in it? Mm -hmm. I did see something super sick, which is that Dizzy, a UK player, oh, yeah. did uh -huh. a string in that had a gap and then canceled the last hit of the string into his own parry. Yeah, uh -huh. and the parry beat. The opponent's flawless block into up two. I did see that, yeah. You know, hats off to the kid. Right, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's super mm -hmm, sick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if that ever happens in tournament, that will be amazing. Yeah. But I think that in general, flawless blocking up two is going to be like, well, pretty I, great. I think flawless blocking is going to be super good overall. Yeah. Because you don't have to move. Because the thing about it is, it's an automatic. It's it's just defense it's just more defend. than a parry, but yeah. it gives you parry reward as opposed to just defend reward from CVS yes, two, right? Right. So you're always going to try to block, but slightly early, just in case, right? And then if you're wrong, you block. And if you're right, you get to kill them. With how much parry dominates Third Strike's gameplay, I feel like if they don't nerf perfect blocking in this game, a little flawless blocking, that it might actually end up dominating the game a little bit too much. I think they're going to have to be a little careful with it. I, I, think, I think that's true. Maybe not because I think it will be a parry, because... It's not going to be option selected in the sense that third strikes are, right? You, yeah, you walk yeah, forward, you uh, press uh, down. Uh, like uh, in third strike, uh, that's just movement that turns into parry. Mm -hmm. But in this game, you do have to press the block button. It's true. It's true. So I think I, there is that difference. But I do think that it's going to be really good. And I, I yeah, top tier Harley. I personally feel that maybe just having it so you can do the up three option afterward to get like a punish, yeah, 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 but not yeah, like yeah, a yeah. bunch of damage out right, of it. Right, exactly. Maybe that. I also think that it kind of devalues. Or may I did maybe maybe Dizzy's action makes this uh, wrong, but um, flawless blocking up two seems just better than having a counter special. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's just like mm -hmm. strictly better than right. so like why have a counter special unless it's maybe specifically to beat flawless blocking up two in the way that Dizzy did. Right. Maybe that's the only super good usage. But not item. everybody has one, right? No, 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 like, no, 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 like no. Scorpion only didn't have one, right? Yeah, so uh, I mean, if I predicted, I can't do anything cool like that. No. Right? Yeah, so. I don't. Th well. Maybe I could teleport and hit him from the other maybe side. Maybe you could. Yeah. Honestly, uh, maybe you could. Uh -huh. Maybe you could. Uh, I don't know. I'm that. I think that's my biggest concern, and it's not a very big one, is that Flawless Walking Up 2 will be too good. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I think I was super happy with the game engine. Uh, I mean, I did agree with some people that I just felt like dashing just didn't exist. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I dashed, and I was like... I was like, did, did I dash or did I walk? I yeah. couldn't tell. Like, literally, I felt like walking was just as fast as dashing. I think it is. I think yeah. It is. And but Ed Boon did say that they're going to increase the movement. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I think we're all reading into it that that means that the dashes will be faster. There, There isn't, like, an explicit, you know, nothing explicit about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll talk about that on the combat cast. I don't know, tomorrow, but... Mm -hmm. Um, They're yeah, just gonna something at least. They'll slow down walk speed. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dashing will be better as yeah, a result. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't know, yeah. Uh, uh, dude, I love what Fast Dashing did to Street Fighter, so you're talking <laughs> the wrong dude on that one, Paul. <laughs> I think that's sick. <laughs> Reminds me no, of third. But, I mean, I did see a tweet from somebody else, and I do agree with this, and I know that if I knew all my wake-up options, because let's put it this way, that defensive bar, for me, didn't exist when I played. I never used it because I didn't oh, know how to well, use okay, anything okay. from it, right? But with it intact, I do agree 100% with what... Because uh, I could already tell, like, if I knew how to do those things, the guy that I was playing against, I wouldn't have died as badly, sure. right? But um, it doesn't feel like MKXL where yeah. when you got one guess right, you knocked him down, and then they would just basically be dead, Yeah. right? That's it's all you that. needed. No, yeah. now this time you get knocked down. If you have the meter, you can get up. You can roll away, you can start fighting again, and yeah, so what a lot of people have been saying about the game feeling a lot more neutral based is definitely true. Yeah. It's definitely a lot more neutral based, and there's something very refreshing about that, very comforting about that. And it's what I've said about Street Fighter V versus Tekken and stuff. You know, like Tekken was less popular back when Oki was a lot more deadly. 
when people couldn't get up off the floor. It, you just didn't have the wake-up options, and it was so easy to reset someone off the floor. When they rolled, you'd hit them, and you'd get another juggle combo and just keep doing it over and over and over and over again. Tekken Tag 2, I believe, was the first one when they started making it easier, and then Tekken 7, it's even easier to get up off the floor. Now the game is wildly popular, whereas you have a game like Street Fighter, where, you know, before in 4 you had backdash, focus attack, you know, uppercut, FADC, all these cool options and stuff. Then you go to 5, and all of a sudden you don't have any of those options, and now everyone's mad about the wake-up game, and they're like, well, you need more defensive options, and then you don't feel like you can get up off the floor. I'm starting to feel like that this needs to be a universal design in fighting games that you just mm. have to let people get up off the floor and let them play. Because I, th I think if they don't do that, then they just feel frustrated. Unless they're Marvel players and they know what they're getting themselves yeah. into, right? You know, but for games like Tekken, Street Fighter, or Mortal Kombat, which are a little more mainstream, I feel like having the ability to return to neutral and dying there gives... I mean, I saw the same tweet about Mortal Kombat that I see about... Um, that I see about uh, Tekken all the time. Like, someone was like, in the neutral, I liked it because I could feel like I knew why I was losing, right? In Street Fighter V, you will know exactly why you're losing if you just understand the throw, wake up, shimmy, you know, hey, this is the, you know, back roll versus quick rise. Like, you know why you're losing, but it just doesn't feel that way because you never get up off the floor. Getting up off, off the floor, I feel all like, right. is such an important thing. And MK11 has that. And I think that that's really, really strong. I think that's going to make MK11 very, very popular. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it and play it a lot more because they're going to feel like they're always getting back into the mix of things. So, yeah, I mean, I really enjoy the neutral game. Yeah, mm -hmm. what can I say? I think I think that's a, a really good set of points. When I fought against players who were good, because I, I got few, mm -hmm. you know, not everybody was just eating back twos every day or all day. It was. It was way, obviously, more interesting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and the defensive game was cool. Uh, the neutral game was very cool. Whiff punishing is so good. It's so, it's so doable in an NRS game. Um, even online, I think it's really strong and super fun. The crushing blow system I really enjoyed. I love... Sort of having that extra blow up, mm -hmm. something happening with the No, I can st I can hear like the little, t -t 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 -t, but it's not you. Yeah, I'm not moving it. Wait, start shaking your leg again. No, that wasn't doing it. I don't know what was doing it then. Okay. I really like having conditions that I'm trying to get. It reminds me of, I mean, obviously Soul Calibur, right? Soul Calibur Lethal Hits is like clearly the, but other than that, it kind of it harkens back to maybe like ser searching for your gem conditions in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, where you have like a you know, like, you don't remember? You I, I remember, but like, are you saying this as a good thing or are you saying this as a bad thing? Yeah, I liked it. I thought, <laughs> I thought that the way that they did it was bad, that, but the idea of like, you have some external goal condition mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. want to meet in order to get something good for you, that's not just a traditional sort of right. footsie yeah, is pressure yeah, yeah. kind of stuff about fighting games. I really like that. I think that's very cool. And I love it in Soul Calibur, and I think I'm going to love it in Mortal Kombat 11. I think it's, I think it's really fun. Yeah. And keep, <laughs> keeping track of that stuff at first seemed kind of tedious and maybe not that easy. But I think on thinking about it, I'll just get used to it probably mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. feel that it's not that big of a deal. But the, well, yeah. while I was first playing it, I kept thinking, like, I don't know when my throw is going to do a crushing blow. Because it's after, they, after the opponent misses a tech two or three times, I forget which. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at some point in some matches, I would get a throw crushing blow. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about Forgot about that, and right. I, but I think just the more I play, I'll probably just yeah, yeah, yeah. keep, keep I mean, that in mind. I've, I've already been going through that while playing Soul Calibur, but right. Soul Calibur, most of them are pretty straightforward instances as well. You know, yeah, there's yeah. only a few really bizarre yeah, ones sure. out there, sure. like hit them with the number of this thing, right. you know, which kill a has one of them, which right. is really bizarre. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so I, I like that. Oh, what do you think about the crushing blow down two underneath? high attacks and throws. I didn't know it gave me a combo. I really wish I did. Yeah, dude, you get a blow up afterwards. Yeah, I didn't You get know. a full like jump attack into full juggle, whatever you want. I, I wish I knew. I did not know about that. Okay, so. all right. Well, I was taking advantage of that and uh, getting big damage out of it. Like even as, even though I didn't have gutted on Baraka, mm -hmm. that would be like a good 45, 50% right. combo. Mm -hmm. That was a huge damage. 
Uh, I, I like doing a down two underneath a throw. I think that's pretty yeah, cool. That's like a yeah, yeah. that like feels good. You're like, I knew you were going for a grab, so I stop mm-hmm. blocking mm-hmm. specifically to do my down two. I like that. Oh, it's only once per game, I guess. You can't do it multiple times. That's how all the crushing blows. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. The, yeah, all, all crushing blows are once per game. Okay, max. okay, okay. Yeah, so you have to decide when gotcha, in the game gotcha. you will use okay, your crushing okay. blow. Yeah, yeah. Because I would land it, and I don't know why it triggers. Like I would oh. land certain things with scorpion, and it would just happen. And I'm like, I don't know why. This oh happens, well, there were some so. things that just did it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were definitely some mm-hmm. that just. There's, mm-hmm. There were also some that did it at the end of long combos. I think for scorpion. Right. Uh, but um, anyway, so down two crushing blow under throws is cool. Down two th- uh, crushing blow under high attacks, I, I'm less convinced by it yeah, because yeah, yeah. high attacks are already just worse than mids. Like if mm-hmm. there, this happened several times in MKX where things would be mids and be really good, and then they get nerfed to being high attacks, and then they were useless, and then that was a major problem. Yep. Like that happened quite a mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. a few times anyway. And there were even instances of the opposite where things were mid or things were high, and then they became a mid, and it's like, wow, that's a good move now. That's that's already a thing. So to to penalize them further by having a crushing blow under highs, just it's like an extra penalty that I don't right. know why it exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's true. Especially if highs are already inherent. They're already weak. worse. Right. Like if you did, if it was like uh, Soul Calibur where you managed to do a, a hopping low crush against the sweep, like that's cool, that would be sick. right? Yeah. yeah, that's that's like Soul Calibur has a bunch of those. I wonder if any of the so so there's UOHs, Universal Overheads. Well, like it's just short tracks. hops. It's just short yeah. hops. You yeah. can just jump. It's yeah. not even a Universal Overhead. Okay, you for just sure. have short hops basically. That, okay, I guess, but you're yeah. not moving around. It's just neutral jump, short hops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought you could forward and. I don't think so. I, think I that's thought just, you could short hop forward and backwards. I can't remember now. I okay. Well, I mean, let me know if I'm wrong, but I, th- I think you cannot. Okay, okay. Uh, it'd be cool if those had crushing blow. It was just neutral, okay. That's okay. what I thought, yeah. Uh, it would be cool if those had crushing blow conditions, if okay, you because okay. they do low crush. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. That mm-hmm. would be cool. They also crush throws. So, yeah, look, I mean, that'd be awesome to have crushing blows on that, though. Yeah. I re- anyway, I really like the crushing blow system. I think it's very cool. I'm just not sure about penalizing high attacks with yeah, down yeah, twos yeah. even worse than they already are. So then, of course, now the follow-up question is, what do you think of Fatal Blows? Fatal Blows, I am not that upset by, but I do think they're a little too good. <laughs> yeah. I think Fatal Blows just should be punishable on block. So they are end-of-round things where when you're below, I don't know, 30% health or something mm-hmm, like that, mm-hmm. you get access to this move that is a super, essentially, in terms of damage output. It has armor after the first couple frames. Well, I it, didn't know the instant overheads. Like, if you do the neutral and attack, you're, like, super negative off of those. Oh, I don't know if every character is like that, dude. I, okay. I remember talking with the NRS guys, and they were like, yeah, this character is really good. Oh, so, okay, okay. But maybe that's changed. I don't okay, know. Okay, okay. Um, anyway, yeah, fatal, fatal Blows. The thing about them is that once you land a Fatal Blow, you that's it for the game. You yeah. don't get it in the next round. So if you use it in round one or round two, you don't get it in round three, etc., right. etc. So that's that's the downside of them. But other than that, like you use them and they get blocked or whiffed, they come back after like five seconds or so. You get mm-hmm. another chance at it in the same mm-hmm. round. So I never understood their armor quite. Properly. It's not immediate armor, but there is armor after the first few frames. Because I swear I did it on people who jumped at me, and I just got kicked out of it, and I was like, yeah, that happened super to me confused. And then I would sweep at somebody, and his armor would go through me. But then there was a time I swept at someone, and it didn't go through it. So maybe I just meted it properly enough, or something Could like be. that. But it was weird. But again, I just don't like the fact that it was like super safe on block. Safe on block, you get another chance at it, mm-hmm. right? And in the few instances where I was playing against good players and we would like save our fatal blow until the final round mm-hmm. and we both have low life and we both have final uh, fatal blows now then it was just kind of dumb we were just like <laughs> we were just like waiting for the other person to do anything at all yeah, and you just press uh, the two buttons the two little shoulder and, buttons you know, and it comes out I, I'm still I, I still hate supers that are button presses yeah like yeah, it's yeah. the custom combo problem yeah uh, it happens in Tekken it happens in Soul Calibur yeah. it happens now in this game it's been happening in NRS games yeah really. I'm, I'm just I don't like that trend like I all of those things can be fixed if you just make them two quarter circle forwards and then those buttons if you just do that for every one of those games, you fix half of the problems with those things because now you just can't go, he whipped the, ah! You know what I mean? Right. Like, it takes some anticipation and remember reaction. Remember Superman's super was a full screen? I don't remember if it was literally one frame, but it was like two almost frames. It was two, two frames. frames. Two frames. Two frame overhead. Overhead. From a full screen. It was yeah. a button press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a decision. Mm-hmm. But anyway, they changed that, so. 
But yeah, uh, I, I'm not a fan of single button like that. And then also they just do too much damage. And I'll tell you this right now. I am already so tired of Scorpion's Fatal Blow. Like, I, mm. I, because I played 90 Scorpion mirror matches and I was landing them and they were landing them, I saw that stupid animation like a million times. I freaking hate it. Like, I hate it more than the stage transitions in Injustice right now. It's probably like 10 seconds long. Like, what do you, what would you think? I don't know. It wasn't as long as the first Injustice, ch- you know, the screen it changes, but oh, those yeah. just didn't those... happen as often. Yeah, yeah. This was just like, every time it just landed, I was like, I think there's a third one, right? Yeah, and then I was just like, God, like, can't, I don't need to see this anymore. I really don't need to see this anymore. I mean, even Mike Z put in the skip to, uh, oh, that's to, right. to was it Miss Fortune? Yeah, 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 the, the level three for, uh, for not, was it Miss Fortune? The, the nurse, right? Uh, Valentine. Valentine, that's what it was, Valentine. But yeah, like seriously, I just saw way too many of those fail blows. Like I, I just, I don't want to see them anymore because they're so long and tedious and they're just not cool. Like it's already stupid enough that you stab someone through the face and then they get up and keep fighting you. Like that already made it silly, but the fact that I have to see it almost guaranteed once every match yeah. is already just kind of like, <sighs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like I just I wasn't about it, so yeah. Uh, well, I can't blame you. I'm not a big fan of like big cinematic supers, right? At all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Part of why I like Zangief Super and SF5, I know I know other people don't, is that it is short. He just goes, rawr, rawr, that's it, and it's mm-hmm, over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cool. Let's get back to playing video right, games, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was one match I fought against someone, and he hit me with his, and I got up, and then I hit him with mine. And already we've just had like, like half later. a minute of like yeah, no literally, I guess. play. Like we're just sitting there, and I was just like, like even when I hit it on somebody else, I was just like, yeah. Well, you know. I don't think that's going anywhere, my yeah, man. Yeah, I know. I know. I they, they, but that's my biggest complaint about it. That yeah. would be the main reason why I'd want him to be punishable, just so it would be harder to just throw out like that. Fair enough. Yeah. And just so we don't have to see him. <laughs> and it, it's not like previous NRS games where supers have been long, or x-rays, whatever they call mm-hmm. it in their own game. But you don't see them that often because they're tied to meter. Right. And meter is cherished in previous yes. uh, NRS mm-hmm, games mm-hmm. and so you rarely spend it on your super slash x-ray but in this game you always get the fatal blow when you're at 30% or less because it's not tied to the meter system yep. at all yep so it's you will see it more often for sure did you need to have you, there was no restriction like you need no that's right yeah it's not related just to do meter. whatever at yeah. any time you want so yeah some of the suggestions I've seen are like maybe make it unsafe Maybe make it cost meter so you can't do it for right, free. Yeah. Uh, maybe take out the armor. Like make the, it faster. Just have a I button that, that you can hit that just makes it speed up. <laughs> that would be very funny. <laughs> you know, that would like, be very funny. I think that sure. would be really cool. <laughs> you know. What do you think, Paulo? <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> oh man. Anything else to say about the game? Uh, I just. I mean, we're, we have some quibbles, obviously, but in general, I'm super stoked for it. I think the the heart of it, the core of it, is mm-hmm. excellent. It's I mean, it's an awesome start. I hate betas. I don't like playing betas. What's see this position here. If you don't get hit by him, then you won't see him. And if you never, if you never get under thirty percent health, you'll never have one to do. So it's entirely under player control. <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Fair enough. So I just have to be Get better. Get good, buddy. Get good. Yeah, Get exactly. Good. No, but I don't like betas. I don't like playing betas yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. But I enjoyed this beta a lot, and that says a lot. And I was definitely having a lot of fun with it. I wasn't sure how much I would get interested. So, again, it has NRS problems for me. You know, the super early buffering needed, you know, Mm -hmm. the predictive buffering that you needed, the strings, that kind of stuff. All those little things like that. And just the game 
NRS games, especially Mortal Kombat, because it has a block button, always feels a little slower and like a little bit more underwater to me, mm. just because I have to let go of block to do stuff, and it just doesn't feel as comfortable. But I know that's me. Yeah, yeah. I know that's me. And so I wasn't sure how much I would be, you know, so much trying to get into MK11, but from what I played from the beta, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. In fact... I'll probably stick with Scorpion for a while just because I already know him, and then I'll try to pick up some Johnny Cage later. Well, it depends on maybe the next stress test, the, the sure. beta. Maybe if Johnny Cage is there, I'll try him out and stuff like that. But, man, having a move list would be nice. Like, I know there was, like, some way to access it, so but I don't know how. in the startup of a match, when there's right. the intros between the two uh -huh. characters, you could, thank you very much, you could press start and go into the move list. There was the, there oh, was a move list. okay, and okay. And then it would stay up there... As long as you didn't like X out of it right, while right, the right. game's going. So if you just want to like lose a game, you can just right, like, stay yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Or just like screen, take a picture with your phone really yeah. fast. But that didn't like pause that. the game. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It just made it so that you were like not playing. <laughs> right. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. I just would. Okay. Let me put. I would have liked a move list not in the game. In so the last day we weren't there to play it anymore. But the last day they allowed the towers to be playable. Oh the single really? Player content oh towers. dang! And oh. during that time you could have more easily, ch you know, seen what yeah, your moves yeah, yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, okay, uh, okay. Because I figured out most of my chains, but I had to just. Dude, it's it's funny. Like I don't know that I'll put up the videos in like progression of time, but. Uh -huh. The first hour I played, I figured out like, all right, Baraka has like one, one, two, cool. Like, like okay, four, two, one. Like, I figured out these slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh -huh, an hour uh -huh. later, oh, he's got a back three, one, two. Yeah. Got it. Like it's like slowly. Dude, game. I mean, when you first watch me play, like I'm doing nothing. By yeah. the time I'm towards the end, I've got like back one, two, you know, yeah, back yeah, one, four, yeah. one, one, towards it. Like I'm doing all these crazy chains, all over like the high low mix ups and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Ah, yeah. What about custom variations? So there's still, as far as I know, no set, you know, announcement as to how they're going to be dealing with these things once the game is fully out. Will the variations be fully customizable in some way? Will they be set to just three variations like MKX was or some other number of variations? The game came loaded with three variations per character, but you could change them. You could even change their names to. and everything. Like I said, yeah. the first variation of, of Scorpion was Boone's main. Yeah. Which I just feel like that just means it was Boone's main, yeah. right? But like I know I clearly saw a screenshot of Sonic Fox and his um, variation was called I'm gay. Mm -hmm. So I know you can change it to whatever you want it mm -hmm. to. So. Yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you think about the how custom variations went in the beta? Because people were playing custom variations. Um, I think the thing about it is if you have custom variations... I think that basically means you will have no variations, honestly, because you will find the best one. Okay. And everybody will use that one. You know what I mean? So if, for example, Fire Breather was the one that let you put Misery Blade in there, you of course you're going to pick that one, right? You're not going to pick the chain thing ever, right? So that's just the thing. So I honestly feel like... I felt like that was going to happen to Smash as well. You know, in Smash 4, remember they had the customizations? I just felt like you were just going to find the best one, and, and most everybody was going to pick that. It's going to be like Third Strike, right? Outside of Dudley, who you could choose between more damage or more supers for less damage. But otherwise, it was going to be everyone plays SA3 Ken. Everyone plays SA2 Chun. Everyone plays Aegis Reflector for Yurian. You know, that was what I was worried about uh, for the customized variations. So... Unless some people can find some really cool variations to it, but I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see that much difference. Because even with the Scorpion ones that I was playing, I didn't really try the first one much, but the, between the first and second ones, like, it was clearly that one was superior to the other. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't feel mm -hmm. like there was any reason to, to not play the one that was better. So, In Baraka, which is the character that I spent the most time in, mm -hmm. I felt like there were three, like, legit variations, and you would need to really pick between them because gutted was i think two bar two slots if i recall okay, correctly okay. so that although that's like the obvious damage combo mm -hmm, starter mm -hmm. right like that would make sense for just utilitarian perspective but that means maybe you don't get the command grab and that's the only reason i'm playing baraka right. is the command grab <laughs> and so but i also think the flag stuff is really interesting the way that he moves around with it is cool mm -hmm. like i feel that it would I get, I get your point that there would be some like optimized thing, but I think it would be more than one. It would be like, 
all right, if you're going to play a command grab, what's like the best one to go with command grab? Or right. if you're going to play the one that just does the damage, like what's the other best tool that goes? Like I feel like there's going to be maybe that kind of optimization, but I don't expect it to be like one per character. That's genius. Do you see what C60 Jam says? He named his variation Learning Moves, and a few people actually let me practice for a round before they fought. Genius. This guy is... Genius. <laughs> genius. Now I want to do that too. I want to put... I want, I'm, now I'm sad I didn't put down Let Me Try Stuff. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be a, That would have been a good idea. Oh, Steve. man. That's genius right yeah. there. Man. E even with... MKX with the three variations that there were per character, most characters had the best one. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so typically when you saw Kotal Khan, they'd be playing War God. Right. Some people did play Sun God, the Command Grab one. Some people played Blood God. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that's only if you really wanted right. a Command Grab or really wanted the weird totems. Right. Those are the two that I played. But the, <laughs> the fact that is that you know most characters had like the best one right. and maybe like well, one secondary but see that's what i mean though is by the nature of customization depending on how much vary unless everything that's good is distinctly two slots so that you can't put both of them on there cuz it's three slots right. maximum with customizable variations if there's something that you wish you had in one of them like let's say you want to just maybe you were a Kotal complex and you just like one of those totems you didn't care about the other ones you just really liked one of them okay so then you could play the cat command grab one and then just put that one totem in there and then you would have the best of what you wanted in there. And if it turns out to be the best, then everybody's going to do that. You know what I mean? That's the only thing that I'm worried about. That's, that's all I'm worried about. And I'm also worried about how long it's going to make tournaments run. Because, you, you know, sure. you want your variation. Now you've got to go ahead of time and now you've got to go change them. I just feel like there's a, there's a solution to that. Like it's, you know, either you put in the number code of whatever your thing is, or it's just like when you put, pick a character, it's like reverse CVS2, then which group do you want? And you just pick, it's just right, like a, right, right. Just a list comes up, you know, you just do it. Right. I feel like it's, I feel like that's not a big practical problem, but it does increase the time, of course. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I've seen people discuss whether there should be three out of five or two out of three tournament matches for, whoa, what's up, Cash? Oh, dang. For Mortal Kombat 11. I don't feel that three out of five seems necessary, but I guess we'll see how it we launches. We don't know. We don't know yet. Yeah, we'll see how it launches, but I don't feel like three out of five is necessary. I mean, let's put it this way. Yeah. Remember when Marvel 3 first came out and we saw the exhibitions, we're like, man, this game is long. For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And then afterwards, we're like, wow, you died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Yeah, Two yeah. out of three to start. And then yeah. we'll see how it goes. Okay. I, I agree. I, I think I think it seems like a start at two out of three. Look, I honestly agree with Guns of Blaze that Injustice Two was didn't need to be a three out of five mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. Honestly, even though the life bars were vampire style, I didn't think that they needed to be three out of five. Dude, yeah. that would be genius if they actually had amiibos for Mortal Kombat. You know, you can save your customization on them that way. But but. I do want to know what my opponent's moves are. Mm -hmm. So I so so say, oh, yeah, by the so way. even even if there's like a number that that you punch in, I then I'm not gonna remember every number of the game. So then let me know what that means on the versus screen. on the screen. Yeah, because even when you were able to rename your thing, I didn't even know what variation. Like after the like, if I was picking my character and I didn't see what my opponent was picking, I didn't see what variation they pick. It wasn't on the versus screen. It wasn't even in the game. Yeah. I couldn't even see what... You just had to see them do the moves. Right. Uh, I just had to see them do the moves, and especially if they changed the name of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, like, wouldn't it be cool? Like, what if I was a Scorpion player, and I played Fire Breather, and I named it to Chain Master or whatever like that, and I come in here, and then you'd be like, I'm going to be worried about these Chain Master moves, and all of a sudden, like, the Fire Breather that stuff comes That would be very out. funny. I mean, that, that, that shenanigan would last a whole, like, ten seconds, but still, it would be hilarious, though. It would be pretty funny. Yeah. Blind pick every game. No, but but once there's like the loading screen where the little small characters are beating each other up in the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should have the then, list. They should at least it. you yes, have to let yes. them know. Mm -hmm. Have to let the players Dude, know. Trust me, I Phantom. This is all fighting game players do is scumbag tactics. We'll get to that in just a little bit once we start talking More about some. Holes, yeah, dude, come on. Uh, absolutely. Obviously. So. Oh, anyway, ow. it was great. I super super enjoyed it. It was at final round, so I couldn't play as much as I would have wanted to, but. Just you know, like it's going to be of time. at NCR when we're going. There will be another. Well, the beta, not the stress test, will be out while we are while we are at uh, NorCal Regional. So, I'll be bringing my PlayStation again. 
-hmm. But I'll be just driving up to that one, so it'll be easier. I'm not gonna have to I might have to give you my joystick so you can bring that up there. You got it, my man. Okay. I'll do that next uh, Tuesday then. Next yeah. Tuesday, I'll let you borrow that. So. Okay. Yeah, dude, I, I, I really feel that having just like slots on the character select screen after you pick a character should just be like easily done. Just mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. It just shows exactly what the slots are and stuff like I that. I feel like that should be easy. Mm -hmm. so. I don't know what they're going to do. Just speculating. Anything else to say about MK11? Mm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it more than I thought I would, so... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's take a break. Take a break. When we come back, we'll discuss some Street Fighter League stuff, some 5-5 five -five matchup stuff, and I doubt we'll get to any FGC news at this point. So. Probably not. Okay. Be right back, guys. I'm going to go... Well, turn it off. I'm going to... Or turn my mic off, because I'm going to take it off. Oh, okay. Okay. You're going to take it off? Yeah. Oh, Woo! Let's go. Dollar bills at the ready. All right, I'm back with roasted butternut squash, red quinoa, and wheat berry salad. Dang. That sounds very healthy. Which Trader Joe's do you hit up? Is it the one that's on Olympic? Pico. Pico? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is on Pico. Okay. okay. <clears throat> So what are we talking about next? Uh, we are going to be talking about the Street Fighter League. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Power Ranger news. We talked a little bit about Power Rangers uh, yeah, we last, talked time. last time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we'll talk about Stadia a little bit today. Indeed. All right, so I asked my brother who BP Brand Muffin is on Twitch. Is it him? He says, not me. I don't even go on Twitch. Why would you add the second part of that sentence? Yeah. You could just say, not me. Jared! Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be inclined to agree with Why? You. Are they saying something about you that only someone close would know? Well, <laughs> well, well. Hang on a second. Well, it's you, well, it's you, well, it's you, well, it's you. <laughs> then, then my other brother says, if it's about your big butt, most people know about that. <laughs> I got to tell you, man, growing up in the Graham family must have been some kind of experience, let me tell you. I mean, like I said, there was the one time I was in the car with you and your brother. You were driving around, and I think you forgot I was in the backseat. Both of you just kept farting at each other. <laughs> and I was just sitting back there and I was like, oh boy. Like you guys would lean and like try to get as much <laughs> flapping as possible. You know, it was... Um... All right, well, let's get back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mods, please. Mods, please. I mean, it's funny timing for it, but yeah, come on. Uh, thank you. Thank you. No, actually, time them out forever. Actually, there you go. You're done. Okay, ready? Yep. Hello, welcome back to the show. Everybody yes. except Jared. <laughs> Did you even know that they might even be watching at all? No, I don't know. It's probably not even him anyways. <laughs> anyway, so Street Fighter League, U.S. News... Attention to the other thing now. Uh, <laughs> the players are decided. There was voting on it. There was online qualifiers for it, and now we know who is in. Essentially, mm -hmm. the online warriors are up to snuff. These are people who won the tournaments, by the way. Mm -hmm. Up to snuff. Rob TV, JB, Just a Kid, Samurai, Just a Kid, and Psycho. Jury player, right? Correct, indeed. Nice. Correct. 
So that's pretty cool. And then the community favorites, the people who won the fan favorite voting, are Brian F, Shine, Dual Kevin, El Chicote, Classico, and Broly Legs. Yeah, kind of an unfortunate situation that a lot of that voting stuff went down during the weekend of final round. That super sucks, it turns out. But, I mean, Brian F managed to get top eight at final round and still won this voting, so... It is go. definitely cool for him. And I know that Shine was streaming, like, even that weekend to try to promote himself, oh, really? even though he was trying to play oh, also, okay. so he was, like, really busy. Uh, that's, an, uh, that's kind of annoying. So. Oh, yeah, that definitely sucks. But, but then the other guys... I mean, Dual Kevin was there. El Chicote was there. I don't know mm -hmm. if those guys were also doing that or what, but... Um, I feel like those are, are not expected results, really. Like, I think it makes sense maybe, like, Brian F., Shine. Dual Kevin had basically the Marvel scene behind him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Broly Legs has a, you know, big Following. fan base. I think, yeah. that, I think that makes sense. Um, I'm surprised not to see, like, Smug in there. Uh, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, I, 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 I'm not surprised by these results just okay. because I feel like the whole thing was just kind of haphazard and not okay, fair particularly enough. well promoted. That it was just going to be whoever just had the proper promotion was going to get that kind of a situation. So this doesn't actually surprise me as how it turned out. I guess that's a good point. I hadn't really thought of that. But even still, I feel like the name brand value of players yeah, yeah, would yeah, like yeah. carry them through. That's not what happened, though. So it's pretty cool for El Chicote and Classico. This is a big opportunity, of course. Yeah, and also, it's, it's true. It's no stupendous as well. No stew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people who have good stream followings, who have funny streams... Um, Mike Dustronk is like a good example. He was also there, mm -hmm. so maybe he just just couldn't get it going. It's uh, you know not not ideal timing. Right, but certainly. see see how many people in the chat are just saying that they didn't even know that the voting was going on. Yeah. Oh, Stupendous is in the chat too. Oh, what up, man? Yeah, that's a bummer, huh? The well, okay. Did you did you campaign? Talking to Stu. Just curious, like I, I didn't talk with many players about it. He says it. he hella did. You hella yeah. did. Okay, wow. Now the question is, did you also do? You, could you only vote for one person, or could you? Was it one of those things that you could vote for as many people? I as think it was want? one, but I, uh, I didn't do it because I felt okay. like I shouldn't. You know. Yeah. Well, Jay Wong like, didn't want to. Jay Wong can't get in my vote because um, he's one of the captains, right? He's gonna be one of the captains anyway, so. Yeah, but like l most people didn't even know any of the voting. Even your brother didn't know the voting was going to be happening. Dang. No, yeah, kidding. well, he doesn't know much, so. <laughs> Dang. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, everybody in the chat saying that they didn't know about it. So there you go. So that there sucks. was just the poor publicity on yeah. that. And just like, and, and, and the, the hardest part about it, too, honestly, is like, it's not like they didn't talk about it on social media or anything, but there just was no information. Like, why wouldn't it be in the game? Um, I don't right, know. like, why wouldn't, you know, I just feel like they just, the Street Fighter League thing is already confusing. Like, you've just been hearing about people winning these tournaments. I don't feel like those tournaments have been attended as, 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 as well as they probably could have. And then have they even been being streamed? You know what I mean? Kind of, I'm, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know either, man. Right? Like, they might have been streamed and I just didn't know, right? It's so, possible, yeah. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Votes counted depending if you had, so you had to have Twitter Followed Smashy G on it, followed Capcom Fighters on it, and nominated nom nominating on Smashy G itself right. was cumbersome. Mm -hmm. So that's not ideal. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. It would be really nice if there were a better job on that front. And obviously if it wasn't also final round weekend. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's unfortunate. The captains... I mean, honestly, another thing too is that they could have at least talked to us about it. We could have talked about it on stream. Oh, as a commentary for Final yeah, Round? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Like, that probably would have been a good idea, too. That would have made sense, too. to be yeah, honest. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe our bad a little bit, but, yeah, yeah we, didn't, we didn't think about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, we, we should have done that. That's, we should have done that. <sighs> Apologies. Um, so the captains are probably, because I saw this was unconfirmed, but they're the players, they're chosen from the press release. Chosen from the top ranked players from the CPT 2018 NA leaderboards. Yeah, this is the Street Fighter League where they had that ban rule in there. Correct. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that mean that the top ranked players, that the highest ranked players are the ones who need to be selected? Or does it just mean they're going to pick some people from among the top ranked players? Right, we don't know. And they don't, oh, could only be U.S. players, right? It's yes. only allowed to be the U.S. players. So who are the current six you mentioned again? Knuckle Dude, Justin, Punk, Idom, 
Toy and nephew, and of course, I'm sure some of these guys can probably opt out as well, right? Uh, I'm so, sure you can you know, if you want. So, like, yeah. Jessica was like, "I don't want to do this," and then boom, all of a sudden they got to drop down to probably could. That seems unlikely. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Probably could. And then the next step in the chain is the draft. So the captains will draft players. Mm -hmm. However, I tried looking and couldn't find when that is. Okay, and I'm guessing it's probably you can only draft one tournament winner and then one. Correct. Right, and that's how it You works, get one of so. each. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that will take place during a single day on NCR weekend. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> I don't know what it's happening. Oh, man. Yeah. This is the league where you get to ban a, a character, character, like while, it's, while you're playing against somebody else. Um, so before the 3v3 commences, both teams ban a character from the roster. So I was thinking about like which players use which characters, and there's a bunch. Of, there's are some repeat characters. Right. So it's like conceivable that one team could have both dual Kevin Rashid and JB Rashid. Right. And, and then the other team would definitely ban Rashid. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like that would be if you're drafting, you would make sure you just don't do that. I guess, but maybe you don't have the option depending on where you are right. in the rotation. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And so, and and what about this? Say that you are the second to last team to pick, mm -hmm. and you know the last team to pick already has JB on the online qualifiers, and there's two people left, and one of them is the other Rashid player. Mm -hmm. You definitely, regardless of who it is, right. you pick the one who's not the Rashid player so that you can bust them when you so play you them and screw them. their Rashids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And JB has even joked about it too. He's like, I don't use any other characters. So um, just yeah. You know, Brian F. basically plays Boxer. Like, Shine basically plays Ibuki. He used to play other stuff. I guess he probably could. But, you know, there's, most of these people basically play one character. Mm -hmm. And if they have a backup, it's not the best. Right. Exactly. So. <sighs> I don't know. I'm pretty skeptical about that. I'll tell you what. Okay. Well, that's the update on anyway, the Street, so Fighter, Street League. Fighter League. Nobody knew it was happening, and there are bands. I feel it. like we just ex we just gave so many more people more knowledge about this <laughs> event than uh, previously had known about it uh, ourselves here. So yeah, okay. All right. Well, let's talk about the five five matchup here. We've got all a couple right. of things to go over. Uh, first of all, uh, this weekend was a Smash tournament called Collision. Yeah. And uh, during this event, uh, something very interesting happened. It was before top eight. I think it was to get into top eight. And uh, it was um, Mars versus, was it Wishmaster? I think it was. Wish Wishes sounds right. Wishes, that's what it was. <laughs> Wishmaster. <laughs> uh, wishes versus Mars. And they were playing each other, and uh, one of Wishes' friends... Well, it was just their whole scene, like their whole community were just yelling a lot uh, during the match and uh, like just trash talking a bunch of stuff. And uh, apparently Mars was not comfortable with it. At some points in time during the match, like when he took a stock, he would turn around and yell at the crowd or like, you know, just different situations. He would pop off on the crowd, basically. And so the crowd kept kind of, you know. Of course, if you're the guy, you would see that and be like, oh, we're going to be even louder now, right? So even louder, and apparently one of uh, Wish's friends then eventually yelled, uh, this is the account from Wish's friend. So okay. He was like, he's going to jump, which is kind of like an inside joke for them or whatever like okay. that. But apparently Mars took particular offense to that, turned around and yelled, that's coaching, stop, right? And so basically he even said that he respected that and so he didn't say that anymore and they right. just started yelling whatever the normal stuff and he right. was mostly silent after that. And then he eventually in the final game lost his first stock to an up throw or a down throw, I forgot which one, and then he just got up and walked off the stage. Well, he went to go talk to a TO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and because I guess you can, if you have, according to the rules, you lose a stock and you're on the platform afterward, you can go talk to a T.O. during that time. Okay. That's what I read. Okay, okay. So that's what he went to do. Eventually, the platform ran out. Wishes was like, I don't know what's going on. So he just killed the character. You know, he just knocked him off and won. And he thought that was it. 
But apparently, then a bunch of deliberation happened. And apparently, this took like 40 minutes of deliberation. But other matches started playing, and they just kind of went back and forth and back and forth. They decided to replay the game from the start, and then Wishes was mad about that because he was up. And so they artificially set him to 100 damage and then gave him the stock. But eventually, Mars won anyway. Mars then won the tournament afterwards. Right. And so, you know, Mars was all like, you know, it wasn't as, as big of a deal as people said it was. You know, but Wishes obviously didn't even make top eight as a result and was kind of frustrated. The guy who yelled he's going to jump and all this stuff got got taken out of the venue. Yeah. Now, he did say that he actually said, you know what, just ban me, but don't punish Wishes because it's not his fault. Okay. And then, so he was basically saying, ban me so that he doesn't get punished for it because it's my fault. But apparently, which is, you know, kind of ended up getting punished anyway for it. You know what I mean? And so that kind of whole thing went down. And so a lot of people were talking about it. And I don't know. James, play that video for me, please. Which video? The the Tekken video. Oh, the, the, yes, yes, the Tekken video. Okay, okay. Let's do this. No, the, the quality of it's just going to be whatever, no matter what I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully people at home can hear this. This happened at final round this weekend. Pokeshop's such a treasure, man. No, no, oh, bro. Dude, I, every every time I see him, I'm like, <laughs> Tekken Summit, Poke Chop, please, let's do it. Oh, that needs to happen. Oh, man. That needs to happen. Um, anyway, Is that's... Is it actually Doodoo Brown? Is that what they're saying? I thought it was Do the Brown, the No Round Brown, but it's actually Doodoo Brown. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I don't know that. Um, yeah. yeah, meaning that the opponent doesn't win any rounds. Right, yeah. No Round Brown. Anyway, that's my position. <laughs> <laughs> on on this controversy, uh, I guess. Oh, that if it's doo doo brown, you get no round brown twice. I see how it is. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Thank you for that information. There. So I just flipped uh, off everyone in Brazil. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's my thing. I mean, the, the scenes that I grew up playing in were like not quite that level, but I mean, I'm used to people being loud since forever mm-hmm. in the arcade it was like that and in both in NorCal and SoCal and the DC area Virginia um, I mean I've, we weren't wild but like there was for sure chattering and yelling see, and I always st- I still know I still remember the NCR where I think it was for Soul Calibur 5 where we literally changed who won that tournament because of the oh I remember of exactly what you're talking about yeah it was uh, led by uh, Sanchez and yeah we were just basically yelling at this guy who was very cocky and just was like popping off on this the, the silent like guy. So we just started talking smack to him, and he eventually lost. Right now, I, I'm. It's not my position that just because something used to happen, it needs to continue to happen. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, no. of course, of course. But that said, I do think that it's good to have like player crowd interaction. Mm-hmm. I'm in favor of that. I'm not and in then, favor of go, go of getting rid of that. And, and the funniest thing is I had the same reaction. You said Mean Saltine on Twitter had the exact same reply was, well then if I'm friends with somebody and he's starting to lose, I'm going to start yelling advice to the other guy. It's going to be like the Bart Simpson dog episode where he's like, pee on the ground over there, sniff the other dog's butt. See, he's doing what I'm saying, right? Like, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to yell advice to the person that I want to lose, and then someone else can be like, he's coaching, and then they can rerun the whole thing over again. Correct. Right? Like, Exploit it. That's just how you do it. That's how fighting games play. It's scumbag task tactics, right? Yeah. We're just going to do everything about that, so. Yeah. I- I'm not sure that it's even up, that this is even, like, to the Mena slash Kaba 
loudness situation. And even we weren't against that, right? Yeah, we, we weren't yeah. against that. But yeah. I'm, I'm saying I'm, I don't think that this issue of coaching from the crowd is even that degree of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like should have been a problem. I feel like it's less. It's much less than that. Uh, Dude, I'll tell you one thing right now. I think now. it's silly. If you're a fighting game player and you're not trying to take advantage of every broken thing in the game to win, then you're not a real fighting game player. That's just how fighting game players are, right? Like, we try to find ways to use... Like, as soon as I saw Ryu's fake fireball in, in, in HDR, I was yeah. like, this is not a fake fireball. This is a Roman cancel. Yeah. I'm just going to do low sweep in the fake fireball, right? That's not what it was for. No. But it's like what you're going to use it for, right? You know? And like I did cross up, low fears, fake fireball, low roundhouse, fake fireball, fake fireball, one up throw, and yep. and and so yep. I was like, wow, that's good. <laughs> like, oh man! It's like how? Uh, anyways, yeah. anyway, there's going to be coaching from the crowd. That will exist. It's existed in everything. Nathan. Nathan's beating up the chair with his claws. Um, that's existed in everything. Boy, I've told a lot of professional sportsmen how they should be doing their jobs. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them. Uh, that's like how it goes, you know, where I think we're all just, we all just do that. I don't even think that's a cultural thing. Like, everybody does that for their favorite sport, mm-hmm, right? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't, every country does that. So, I, I don't know. I think that's something to just, like, expect. If that throws you off, that is unfortunate. But that is something that is part of the game. I, yeah. I feel like it's just part of tournaments. Some people are good with crowd noise. That helps them. Some people, it hurts them. Dude, I'm terrible I, I, you know, with it. What, what do you I'm do? terrible with it, and I don't want it to stop. Like, I wouldn't want it to go away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it affects my game, but I, I would rather have it keep going that For way. Sure. You know? And honestly, like, it's just part of the environment, man. I, I'm really sad they did rerun the match. I, I really am. Me too. To be honest it with sucks. you. Because, you, like... I just, it's just I feel like at that point you forfeit the game when you get up like that, right? Well, I so. guess it's part of the rules that you can go, right? But talk to the TO, but then the TO shouldn't have said. It. Well, no. Here's the thing: is if you go and talk to the TO, you should also be responsible enough to pause the game on your controller before you do that. But if you do that and you walk away and you know that that platform is going to time out eventually then you've already forfeited that, in my opinion. If it's in the rules, then there has to be some clause where you had better pause the damn game, too, when you go and do that. You know what I mean? Otherwise, that's just going to happen. So, Otherwise, I would always do it. If I lost the first stock, I would just go and talk to the TO and be like, hey, what's up, buddy? And then I would walk back. Let's start over again. Fair enough, yeah. Right? I mean, it's just the way it is. So, And I don't ever want to have soundproof booths. I never want to have a soundproof booth in here's, fighting games. Here's an eSports secret. Soundproof booths don't work. Yeah, I know, right? They don't work. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a ruse being played on the fans at home. I mean, they work to some degree because some noise is obviously cut out, but they don't create soundproof Pausing booths. is literally turned off. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, oh, there you go. I mean, that's, that's not so crazy. Um, anyway, they work because... They do get rid of a little bit of the sound, but then they also have, you know, players have headphones on and whatnot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But you can definitely get through to them, because I can tell you, I've done that too. Yep. <laughs> I've been kicked out of League events, my man. Uh, and when MLG was running League of Legends, and they were playing against Team Marn, yeah. I can tell you, the other team knew that we were there. Yes. Oh yeah, uh, they knew we were there. And Marn even had said that the team could hear the... the of course! The, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. They're, yeah. They're, they don't have soundproof booths. <laughs> but I don't even want to have that sectioning off of the players mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in the first place. Right. I like the fact that they're right there in the crowd and that you can hear them and it's very organic. And it is very much, that's just part of the, 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 the tournament. You just have to deal with that kind of thing. If you can't handle the crowd yelling and heckling at you, then invest in some headphones, you yeah, know what I mean? headphones, so, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, look, for sure they mute some sound. They will dull some sound, actually, mm-hmm. the way you put it's good. But they don't get rid of everything, mm-hmm. for sure. So anyway, I think it kind of sucks. That's yeah. my... Yeah, like I said, I, 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 I'm, I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy that they replayed it. I'm not happy that Wishes ended up getting into that kind of situation. Like, honestly, if I was one of the TOs and I re-ran it and Wishes lost like that, I would just refund his entry mm. fee and just be like, I'm sorry. Like, 
this is kind of weird and stuff like that. And again, even even the friend who wrote his post from his point of view said, don't blame the TOs, don't blame like all that stuff like that. It was you said it's mostly his fault and Mars's fault, <laughs> basically. The so. TOs made the decision to rerun it. Yeah, but I think uh, that seems blameworthy to yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if the point is. Don't personally attack them. They made a bad decision, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. be big. Mm-hmm, no, mm-hmm. don't. Okay, I get that point. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I, I, I have seen COD attorneys, uh, shoot attorneys in general, I think are hilarious because they are yelling at each other constantly. Are they really? They're being dicks to each other. Are you serious? They actually trash talk the other person? Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't even know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and especially at smaller events. Like, I've seen this at MLG a couple of times. Mm-hmm. They're basically across the table from each other. So you got, a, like, a long table. On one side is one team, on the other side is the other. I think you just, it's just like a head-to-head cat. Yeah, 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 so they're yeah, right uh, there. You uh-huh. just yell at them. So they just yell. That's actually kind of funny. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. All um, right. Anyway, it was dumb. Next topic. The other thing that we wanted to talk about was the new Google Stadia that's coming out. I don't know anything anyway, about it. Anyway, it was dumb. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I just saw the trailer, which doesn't explain anything. Okay, just I watched saying, the whole presentation. We need a new way for players to come together to play the Stadia. That's all I saw. So, Got it. but I heard it's a streaming. It's like the a, it's like a Chromebook version of gaming or something like that. Or how does this work exactly? All right, so it's a streaming gaming platform, mm-hmm. and you can stream to whatever to a computer to a television to a phone, to a tablet, whatever. And doing that, you can get you know, high quality video, mm. uh, 1080p, they said that they're gonna have it in 4K and 8K eventually. Um, that will be in like, you know, high resolution color, 60 frames a second, because all, you know, all of the processing's going on right. at yeah, their yeah, own yeah, processing yeah. farms, mm-hmm. wherever they are. They are. Um, it's basically what Twitch is doing, except they're streaming the content that's specifically on your machine to only to you, kind of. In a, or you can stream it to anybody, huh? In what? So you run it at your home, right? So you are playing YouTube's uh, computer. Oh. Okay, so like YouTube is running a video game gotcha. in wherever, and... They stream the video to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you. And then you're playing it there, uh, at, at wherever you are. And it's kind of cool, right? So you can you can pause your game at any point, like you can a YouTube video. So you're playing it on this guy, mm-hmm. and you can pause it, and you can start playing it on this guy, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that is pretty cool. And there's some other stuff too, like some cool tech that they're coming up with in terms of uh, uh, game dev. Like one thing I thought was pretty cool was that if you are making, uh, if you're like working on the art style, you can have a game that's like all made, and then you can overlay a picture onto it, and it will like change the game's graphics to look like that picture. It's kind of hard to understand, I feel, but like if if there's an all yellow painting that you mm-hmm. like upload, now everything's yellow in Nathan! the game. Nathan. Um, if you go, <laughs> keep explaining. Keep okay. Explaining. <laughs> Uh, if you want, if you upload like an ink thing, then it'll all look inky. Wow, you're blowing stuff up too. <laughs> oh, he's getting sprayed. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they're they're coming up with some pretty cool tech, I think. It's just, it's a streaming gaming platform. Right. right. Which is the question now is the input lag, right? What I've heard is that it's 10 frames is, uh, of input lag. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's accurate, but that's what I have heard. And that's pretty significant, of course. Have you ever played like PlayStation Now and they're like streaming crap to you? No, I've never I tried, tried it once. Because there's yeah. some game that I, it was like CBS Two maybe was on. There's something that I wanted to try, mm-hmm. and oh, that sucked. It just and I remember good. one. I think it was one GDC, or maybe it was an E3. Anyway, some some play, something I went to where there was this company that was like, "All right, everybody, we have the solution to games. You can stream games from anywhere." And they were like, "All right, try out Street Fighter Four in." And I so I did, and it was, you know, horrible. Unplayable, it was basically. just yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was there was uh-huh, no interaction uh-huh. between me and the other player. Right. No mm-hmm. interaction between mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were just guessing, ten frames in advance. It was horrible, uh, and so, yeah. That that's the obvious like immediate. What are you guys doing? Kind of thing, but on top of that, you're streaming all of this stuff 
to wherever you're li- you live. So you have to have a good internet connection. Right. You have to be in some place that has a good internet connection, mm-hmm. which means you're probably not in like shanty towns. Mm-hmm. You're in some city. You're in some some place that's well connected. Um, you have the money. You have the income that you can pay for good internet connection. Because even if you live someplace that has the potential for a good, good connection, you're not paying for good internet right. Right, necessarily. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so you have to be paying for good internet. Don't can you just buy a console at that? Like you, just, right. you have yeah, the disposable yeah, yeah, yeah. money, mm-hmm, probably. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It, it's a very. It, it also. Here's a cool thing. Honestly, this is pretty cool. So you're watching a YouTube video that is of Assassin's Creed. It's a uh-huh, game that they were talking uh-huh, about. Uh-huh. Right next to it is a play button. If, in case you're watching this right, video and you're yeah, like, wow, uh-huh. this game looks cool. You press the play button, guess what? You're playing Assassin's Creed now. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That is pretty cool. But, you know, here we come back to the whole world of digital content again. Yes. It's that you don't own any of you this You don't stuff. own crap. You so are strictly I, a pair of eyeballs. I buy the license to Assassin's Creed, so I'm sitting there playing it. So I'm sure I click the play button. It'll charge my wallet, my Google wallet. 40 bucks or whatever like that. Well, I don't know. I, they maybe, maybe they showed this later on, but when I was watching the presentation, I didn't see that there was any, like, how much does this cost Right. Discussion. Well, it's going to be some Netflix monthly right, subscription that's my guess, or yeah. the games are going to cost stuff. But it doesn't matter because it's the same thing as Netflix. You have that list of what movies popped up on it and what movies have been taken off. Correct. Right? So you, it's, again, that situation again where I, I don't know. I, obviously, I'm old school, but I know a lot of younger people still feel this way. I hate not actually owning the thing that I buy. I understand. You know, I mean, the fact that most people, like, my PlayStation 4 still has uh, PT on there. But, like, if I ever lost my PS4, I would never have that ever again, that Silent Hill demo, right? right? So, and then the people who had Marvel 3, if they uninstalled it off their machine before it came back, right? Uh, But at that point in time, we didn't know if it was coming back. We might have even just been in a situation where... You're like, well, I didn't have it on my console. I didn't know they took it off the store. I just don't have the game anymore. Yeah. Even though I spent 60 bucks on the game, I just don't have it anymore. And I just, I'm not a fan of that whole concept. You know what I mean? I don't like that. And when you have this uh, game, when you have a system that's based entirely on that, I just, I don't know. Like, It's especially dangerous in, I think the Netflix is a good, a good example. Um, Things are coming in and out of Netflix all the time, and was it Disney starting its own thing, right? Well, its own planning to start a channel. Right, they're going to start their own thing. Time, yeah. uh, I guess not yet, but but they are going to like at some point take all of that content off of Netflix. And I mean, they kind of. I mean, stuff. all of the Marvel shows have been canceled. Yeah, okay, every yeah. single one of them has been canceled. So you just you just can't count on the fact that your game that you're playing right. is going to be there in the next month. Mm-hmm. You just can't. Yeah. Um, so. That's not something that I want either. So just from all these angles, I find it confusing. I do think that there's some cool potential in there. I think it's interesting that you could be watching a video and say, yeah, I would like to play. Or that uh, since since everything is going on on Google's own data farm, whatever area, uh, there's no like peer-to-peer thing. It's only up there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that means that they can handle like big connections better so they were talking about having battle royale rather than a hundred people why not a thousand people Mm because it's all taking place at the same spot right right so so the lag is like more you can count on it exactly what it's going to be rather than having this big fluctuation which is you know okay but man the downsides are very significant yeah very significant so like i feel like it might be a good like side thing like maybe just a little fun thing for you know as a as a thing to have alongside consoles or to have alongside your PC gaming and stuff like that right so, so i could see myself playing a turn based game on it cuz lag right. isn't that big a deal mm-hmm. like hearthstone or something like that right yeah. hearthstone uh if i was still playing civ i could see that being like a good yeah, 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 you know you're yeah. switching between all your devices I get that, but for anything that requires any kind of movement or fast decision making or anything like that, I don't imagine this working very well at all. And for the other things like lacking ownership and... Look, dude, Google is such an obvious internet monopoly. Super clear, right? They have all sorts of things going on. I read this piece by a woman who tried to not use Google, Facebook, 
Uh, maybe it was Twitter? Instagram. No, there was like one more. I forget Snapchat? which one it was. Amazon. Amazon. And she just couldn't. It was it was very difficult for her to do. Uh, those companies are just in almost everything. Right. All right. Uh, if you're not going to use Amazon, you're not using Amazon Web Services. I mean, that's just you're just not on the you're internet, done. like right, a, yeah. in, a, uh-huh, in a major uh-huh. way. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, and if you're not using Facebook, it's it's similar in some ways. Google, you can't get between places, and Google, like you can use Google Maps anymore. You can't do like it's just right, a yeah, lot yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Clearly a monopoly in in any uh, previous time. I feel like there would already have been antitrust action against those companies. She but. had to buy a special phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and now Google's going to be trying to dominate video games too. It's just. That's just a big legal red flag, and right. I wish something would happen to them. I would really like that, but I mean, are you starting to see you know, kind of like is. how Microsoft was at one point, like when people were calling for Microsoft to be split up and stuff like yes. that? Would you like to see Google split up as well? Yes. Amazon split up, maybe. Yes. Okay. Facebook as well. Okay. For sure. I think it's dangerous to have the same people in charge of so much of basically world culture. Yeah, yes. Olaf, nobody even knows what a Thomas Guide is anymore, dude. <sighs> I remember my dad used to have just a trunk full of Thomas Guides in the back. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I do like Elizabeth Warren in some ways, but I think she's not a great campaigner. So, right. yeah, I know that's her position. Yeah, anyway, those are my thoughts. I'm Ten- not stoked Tencent for it. Tencent is definitely a, a Chinese company. Right, yeah. ten cent is Chinese, Chinese company. Yeah, but they own a lot of stuff here too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <sighs> anyway, this is crappy. I mean, look. Obviously, not everything Google makes is an instant success, right? Sure. What you if it's like Google uh, Plus? Google Plus. Google Glasses. Also true. You remember how, dude? I tried Google Glasses one time. And I just looked at it, and I was like, there's no way this is going to be anywhere <laughs> near Lisa. Because, like, literally the thing that – the screen that you were looking at is this tiny little thing yeah. that was up there. And I was just like, what? This is not going to work at all. So so not everything they do is necessarily going to work, but we'll see. We'll see what True. happens. So. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm just worried about people just sort of getting – Buying into the system in a way that's not retrievable anymore. Mm-hmm. So, like when we're when we use things like Netflix, um, that means that you're not buying a DVD, probably, right? Like usually, mm-hmm. but you can still buy the DVD if you want. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that'll be true for games that are developed for the Google thing. Right. Right. Uh, Will they be offered separately? Probably not, because the fact that they are like in Google Land is part of why the, part of the design. Mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. like so. For example, this battle royale game that has a thousand people, you just probably can't do that elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You just can't get it elsewhere as a result. So, I, I feel like you're going to get locked into that to some degree. And with look, like once if Disney has its own thing and Netflix has its own thing and every company has its own thing, yeah. we're just going to go back to file sharing. I mean, DC has their own channel right yeah. now. Like right? we're just we're yeah. just going to we're just going to not have those services anymore because the whole point of them is that they had everything. So if they don't have everything in a significant way, we're just going to torrent everything again. Right, Because, exactly. just... I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I have Netflix right now, but now if they bring back Daredevil and Jessica Jones and whatever on their Disney service, now I have to subscribe to another thing, you know, and then I want to watch this other thing, and now i got to subscribe to another thing, you know, and it's yep. just like, I mean, that's why most of the streaming services on your phone tie it to your cable account, right? Because right. they want to prove that you have a cable account, then you can get it for free. Yeah. And, you know, it's, Which et means cetera, that I don't don't have access to those things. Right, exactly. So it's like, I don't... <laughs> you guys mean your piracy. <laughs> yeah, I, how dare you accuse David of ever pirating anything? He has never suggested to me to pirate music off of YouTube or off of file sharing services or laughed at me for buying CDs at some point in time. This has never, okay. ever happened. That part I have. I'm not sure I've specifically suggested that you should just torrent things, but I have laughed at you for buying plastic discs. Stuff. Uh, that, is, that is true. It's collectible supporting the artist, and I get that. Can't, yeah. You know what? It was not, interesting. Not I was that. I forgot who it was, but we were watching TV randomly, and The Walking Dead came on or something like that, right? And they walked up, and 
you know, they had an old record player that was just sitting there. So they're just sitting there playing records and being like, ah, oh, da, da, da. Dude, there is a whole generation of stuff that is not going to exist out there. You know what I mean? Like, we are just not going to, like, even if we yeah. find CDs, if you don't have a CD player, like, how do you play that, right? Like, the record player is literally, you could even crank a freaking old record player and still listen to it. Like, if, if, if the robots ever came and took over or if the aliens ever came and destroyed our society and we somehow won the war and they all left the planet, we would just have a giant chunk of missing information. Absolutely right. And I think that's really scary. It is. It is scary. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and keep this in mind, is not the only instance of I, that. I'm, I'm not a Luddite. Like, I'm all about technology, yeah. but it's just like at the same time, like there's this fear of preservation that I have. So I often, so I, I'm like reading, I watch documentaries all the time. I read history all the time. And all the time they're like, in a letter from Joe to his wife, he talks about blah, blah, blah. And I always think like, what are people in 100 years going to be talking yeah, about? Know, right? like, uh, that just won't be there yeah, unless somebody has a magical dude, internet wayback machine that still works. Like, it's just someone probably actually, not going to exist. I saw an article of someone You'll digging, have no first-hand accounts. digging through their grandmother's house after she passed away, and they found old newspapers of World War II, like Hitler is dead kind of things like that, like newspapers about that. And it's just you're not going to get that anymore. You're not going to rummage through some guy's home and yeah. find, like, you know information anyways. Yeah. yeah well you know i mean for th we can't we can't have physical proof of anything any of everything anymore it just practically is not doable however i would still like to have some things that i own mm -hmm. like there's there are plenty of games that i just download but the games that i care about right. i have the physical versions mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. for sure yeah anyway i think google's a big i'm not a fan I use them constantly because I live in the right, world. Yeah, 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 exactly. I live in the exactly. world, unfortunately. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a fan of what Amazon does. I buy everything on yeah, Amazon. You know, you live in the world. Nothing I can do about it, so. Yeah, but yep. it'd be nice if we could change the rules a little bit. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, Google Stadia, very interesting concept. Not sure I'm all in on that at all, so. I am definitely not. Oh, there was also a rumor going around from somebody who is at GDC who says that he was told that Google wants to have fighting game tournaments on Stadia. That's impossible. The controller, I didn't mention this, is also Wi-Fi. Because, well, I mean, think about it, right? Like, what are you going to plug a controller into? Nothing. There's nothing to plug a controller into. It has to be Wi-Fi and go through the same Wi-Fi connection back to YouTube HQ or Google HQ, and then come back to you. That sounds awful. You can... <laughs> well, what, what wired controller do you use? Well, what do you plug it what into? What do you plug it into? You would have to have, like, a, a machine that's specifically, yeah. like... Which itself is hooked up to the Internet, obviously. Which is hooked up to the Wi-Fi, yeah. so it'll be the same thing anyway, right? Yeah. Unless you could hardwire... Hmm. Okay, so it's the same issue. There's this going back to yeah, the input has to go back to Google HQ. Yeah, yeah, first yeah. No matter yeah. what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Because it's got to process the input at Google HQ to know what happens in the game to stream right. what. But yeah, if you're result. but if you're playing on your TV or your phone or your tablet or something, what does it plug into? Not, I mean, a PC. I understand, but. Hmm. I mean, look, the Chromebook, for example, is a cool idea, but that's never really caught on, right? Like Chromebook, like do I people, think they sell. Do people Chromebook around all over the place? I don't you know? know. I don't feel like I could use a Chromebook. Like I don't feel like that would do nearly what I'd want to do. So. I don't know, my man. So Chromebooks are I, I, successful. Yeah, I think I think they do sell. I just I don't know okay, anybody. Okay. Okay. It just seems weird to me. So, oh, successful for schools. That makes sense. That makes sense. Anyway, so, yeah, the rumor is that they want to play tournaments on it. And in the release video, they, in fact, do show a scene from a Smash Bros. tournament. And, and they show Sonic, Sonic Fox. Fox, yeah, is on there. Uh, in there as well. I, at what I think is NLBC, because it kind of looks like it to me, but I'm not sure if that's okay. true. But for sure, okay. it's Sonic Fox. So, what do you think about having fighting game tournaments on? I mean, obviously, it'll never work. 
if you even, I mean, like everybody's already mad about eight frames, right? If the input lag is already ten frames, that's in the game, right? right. Uh huh. Exactly. So it's ten frames plus eight. Yeah, eighteen frames. Like that's like two one third of a second. Like you just that is just literally unplayable. Like you cannot play a fighting game like that at all, especially games with all of this. What up? Mm. Oh, am I spilling nice. yeah. stuff? Salad dressing, spring salad dressing. But you just can't play it. You just literally can't play it, in my opinion. So, yeah, that is just. Yeah, it might have just been lip service. You never know. So, just to try to get the fighting game community to, like, look like at it. it. <laughs> I feel like it's making us attack them more. Yeah, I know, right? Like, if they, they just came out and they're like, hey, look at our cool turn based. Uh -huh. Games and don't play I'd fighting like, games yeah, on it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't built for games that require fast yeah, action. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But actually, one of the games that they showed or that they announced for it is Doom, Doom Eternal. That's crazy, because that's like super hey. twitchy, right? So I don't know, my man. It is possible that 18 frames is passable for casuals. Absolutely, there there is a giant generation of people out there playing video games on a TV, not set to game setting, not realizing how much lag they are having, uh, display lag, and they're just used to it at this point in time. There's a lot of people out there that just have no idea that this is happening. They just feel like that's the way the game is played. People got good at X band. <laughs> right. A long time ago, and they played it. Right, right? that's so true. So that's the whole thing. So, <laughs> Doom guy. <laughs> like you figure, eventually computers. It's probably now already. Will just be like the combustion engine, where the first people who had cars like knew how a car worked, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then the next generation just has no idea. Right. I don't know <laughs> how a car works, but I drive a car all the time. Um, yeah, I guess that's where computers either will be or already are. I don't know what the next generation is doing. <laughs> I love I that. Some people are just like, what the hell is an X band? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well. It was the it was weird. internet play that was you could use for your Super Nintendo or Genesis that would plug into your regular phone like the dial-up modems. You needed the... Yep. <laughs> And you would connect to it. Yeah. Nobody could make any phone calls on your phone. Yeah. And everything had like 30 frames of input lag right. and stuff like that. But people got used to it. Wasn't so. Mr. Wizard like the best KI player on x -Band? super good at it, apparently. <laughs> yes. He was apparently super good at yeah. it. So. Uh. It would be interesting. Anyway, yeah, what if the next generation not only doesn't know how computers work, but they just accept like a giant lag because that's just what they lived <laughs> right, in their whole yeah, life? Right, I know, right? They don't know any different. Yeah, oh, that's man. possible, I suppose. Oh, boy. All right. Anything else to chat about? Uh, we both think both of these 5.5 five topics suck. Yeah, basically. So uh, is there any FGC news that you wanted to discuss, or is there nothing happening here? I wrote notes on uh, what I would say about this 5-5 matchup thing. Uh -huh. And under Google's new Stadia thing, one of my bullet points was, I find myself becoming old. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. I like that. I like that, actually. Oh, man. Hey, Stadia, Henry, Stadia. Henry, congratulations. Oh, yeah, that's right. Congratulations to Henry. Stadia is, like, supposed to be the plural of stadium, right? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's basically what it is. I mean, so. whatever. Everybody says stadiums. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, of it's course. English. Right. You know how we do it. Using the pluralization of languages that words come from. I mean, it's, it's, come on. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I I literally didn't realize how laggy my TV was until I went to my first tournament for MKX. See, there you go. <laughs> Happened to a lot of people. Got a harrowing picture in the mail. Um, not it's it's all right. <laughs> Just could have done without it. Um, that was almost like the hand warmer reaction. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, anyway, I anything else going on? You didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't actually. Was that obvious? Well, because like I did this, but then I pulled the hand out and went like this, and then I picked it up from over here, 
to show you that I didn't, but I don't think you were looking at me because you were looking to the side. So got it. Yeah, I uh, I have not tried DOA six yet, but it, they do have the free to play version out now. So I'm actually going to try to jump mm. in there because you could do the whole tutorial and everything like that. So I'm going to stream myself doing the whole tutorial and everything like that. Oh, you're just limited to whichever four characters are available at the time, and this oh, is on wow. Steam and on PlayStation oh. Four. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to download it and try it For out. For sure. And okay, then, I'll do that too. And then also, uh, I've been playing a lot. I, pl I, I streamed Tetris 99 yesterday, even uh -huh. because like, I took a nap, and I woke up, and I was all groggy, and I couldn't get my brain straight. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to play Tetris and see if I can just like focus my brain together. Started at 10 o'clock, meant to play for about two hours. Ended up playing for about five hours. My hand hurts so bad. Mm. I'm getting like carpal tunnel from that stupid joy con Ugh. right now. So... You have to figure something out because definitely my hand hurts a lot right now. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. A lot of people have been mentioning that to me. Surprised that they heard me on the Tetris thing. So, yeah, I know. I can't push that pain. So, I need to, I need to switch to a different controller setup or something like that. I definitely need to switch to some sort of other setup. So... I do have anti-hurt hand tech. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need one of those like squish balls that you have. Probably better to just be stretching at the start. Yeah, okay, okay. Because honestly, good like, I have a weird thing. Like, If I have a really heavy grocery bag, and let's say I just roll the top and grip it like this, you know, grip the bag in there and okay. hold it like this, it starts to hurt my hand really where badly does it hurt? after a while. Uh, I have to think. I have to remember where where it hurts, but it starts getting like sore. You can feel like well, it's, everybody's get sore. Well, I mean, it just like you could feel like it's just like I can't even hold the grip anymore. At some point in time, it's really weird. So I don't know. If people just are saying that's fatigue. normal. Yeah, okay. that's muscle fatigue. Okay. Okay. Um, but if you feel, have you felt? This, and this is a weird question because you have. If you haven't felt it, have you felt? Have you felt structural problems? There's a different feeling. Mm -mm. I was at physical therapy earlier today. And trying to get my thumb to sort of do the right thing because it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had me doing things, and I pressed on muscles that I've never known I had. Oh, dang. And while I was doing it, I could feel that there's a structural problem with this joint. It's not doesn't work right. Huh. And it feels very different than muscle fatigue or normal pain. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. They, so if that's not happening, then that's good. They did officially announce a new Goku. Oh, Dragon dude, we've got to talk about the Goku. Son Goku. Yeah. Son Goku, so... I mean... I mean, whatever, I'm... It, do you? Hey! That's what, my reaction. If, if you're making the game, like, do you just feel like... Like, if you're someone... Like, is there anybody involved with the game? They're like, someone comes up to me, like, next character you're adding is Son Goku. I mean, is there anybody at the... Like, Arx is going, come on, man. <laughs> I don't know. Do we really need to live up to this meme, you know, that everybody's Goku? I mean, they should they should cater to the people who like the game. I guess. I mean, is 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 that what's? I don't know. I don't know. You're asking the wrong guy, my yeah. man. But they should cater to the people who like the game. Yeah. It is true that the free DOA is called Core Core Fighters Edition. The core values edition, basically, mm -hmm. and it's like I, I wonder if they did that on purpose. So. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Well, if the scene doesn't even want another Goku, then that's a problem. But I just want them to help the people who like the game to continue to like it. Yep. That's all. I hope that everybody who likes it continues to do so and has a great time. Have a, have a blast, everybody. Sharon is gonna be released for fighting Ex later, huh? Chick with the gun. <clears throat> Oh, DOA 5 was also called Core Fighters. Mm -hmm. Got it. Bummer. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it was a big meta joke by Joey, and he knows about them calling the game Core Fighters, and so he's like, these aren't our core values. Or, or, or Tecmo was just prescient, and they predicted this all Also along. possible. Just like they predicted uh, me and uh, Nerd Josh and put us in the background of Street Fighter 2. That's right. That's right. Hey, kitty cat. <laughs> oh, hi. There's a lot of chattering coming out of Nathan. Anyway, yeah, whatever, man. Have all the Gokus you like. You know, it's no, no sweat off my back. I'm still waiting for the big reveal that Dan is actually the one that became Kage, that he got yeah. absorbed by the Satsui yeah. no Hado because he looks so similar and Dan disappeared from the shop. So. For sure. It it's definitely, it obviously there. is. It's all there. All right. Oh.
Come here, kitty. Curly W, somebody was already working on a Seidenfeld fighting game. Are you serious? I have heard of it in the past. Could be a fever dream, but I'm pretty sure that I recall hearing about a Seinfeld fighting game. Does anybody remember that? What is there to say about a Seinfeld? How would you even Would you mean that? Elaine? She would have good kicks. Yeah, I know. She would have to, her super would definitely just have to be the dance where she's like, <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Soup Nazi. <sighs> okay, all right. Yeah, J Elaine would have standing lows. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. My question is, can people at home... So I checked on the replay. They I, they couldn't hear the, 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 the ringtone, like, direct feed, it feels like. Can you guys hear this? Can you guys hear this with loud volume? Because it's coming through loud volume over this. I mean, I can hear it on this. Right, exactly. Okay, so it is direct feed for you guys. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Only in the left ear, huh? Only in the left ear. That's weird. Okay, I gotta figure that part out then. Huh. Weird. Okay. All right. See you guys later. We talked about Power Rangers last time. Looks all right. See you. <laughs>